exciting. I honestly believe that Dante is the most valuable player in the NFL for the first half of the season. His two punt returns for touchdowns were game-winning punt returns. And what really makes him great are his feet. He stops, he starts, he's at full speed at the blink of an eye. And I'll tell you another thing, he puts fear in opponents and he dictates field position. Now after saying all that, Michael, if you were the Buffalo Bills, would you kick the ball to him? No, no, a thousand times no. Thank you, Paul. Can the Chiefs remain unbeaten tonight? If Dick Vermeil's enthusiasm makes the difference, they may never lose again. If there was ever a time to go to work together, it is tonight. If there was ever a time to go to work together, it is tonight. So let's start out with offense. Offense! Go to work! Defense! Go to work! Defense! Go to work! Go to work! Go to work! Oh, the great players, Kellen Winslow, all those guys. I said to myself, I would be lying to you if I didn't start thinking about it a little bit. But I know early in my career, it's just my seventh year, I want to play a, long, a lot more. So I'm looking forward to going out there and making a lot more plays. What's the biggest difference for you in year three of this offense as opposed to year one? What would you say now? I'm sorry. The biggest difference in this offense in year three. Oh, well, I mean, guys are together now. Nobody held out this year, a la me. Uh, every, Eddie Kinnis and Johnny Morton, we got everybody clicking on the same page. Our third year, we understand the terminology. Now let's just go out there and play. Coaches talk about how they hold you to a different standard when you catch the ball because you make such amazing catches. How would you define a great catch? Any any time you the ball touches your hands, you should make the catch, and that's the way I hold my standards to myself. But a great catch, I always think, is like going up over somebody basketball, getting a rebound type style. And Trent Green is one of the best in the business at doing it. That for me, throwing it up and letting me go make a play. We'll look for that tonight. Have a great game. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Susie. Tonight, Drew Bledsoe gets the chance to knock out the league's only unbeaten team. And this is a guy that can carve up a defense. Team, they act like a team that realizes that their offense can get better. They know their defense is a bit of a work in progress. There's a lot of new players there. And, of course, you know, how many times are people going to kick to Dante Hall? <laughs> yeah. Well, they usually have to kick to him on kickoffs. Otherwise, you give the other team the ball at the 40-yard line. And right now, Antonio Brown is back with Terrence McGee. Brown won the kick return job in preseason. Really hasn't been able to break one during the regular season. Now, this guy, folks, if you don't know about him, this guy is fast. How fast, he is, Paul? Well, how about 4-1? That's fast. I'm going to tell you what. He can fly if he gets open. It will be McGee off his chest. Across the 20, 25, 30, and a nice return by McGee after the bobble. The Bills' offense reawakened last week thanks to Pro Bowler Reuben Brown on the offensive line. They open holes for 196 yards rushing. Eric Molds is back after missing two games with a groin injury. The Bills have sorely missed their big play threat. And Travis Henry, whose numbers were down after a rib injury, had the best game of his career last week. 167 yards rushing. He'll be in the eye behind the fullback, Sam Gash. And Travis Henry gets the first carry. And Travis Henry goes nowhere. The Chiefs have tried to improve on defense with three agents. Bonnie Holiday from the Packers leads the team in sacks. Linebacker Sean Barber from the Eagles has provided leadership and is number one in tackles. And Dexter McLeon from the Rams, where he played for Dick Vermeil, tops the Chiefs with four interceptions. That's tied for third in the NFL. Two tight ends, two wide receivers for Bledsoe, and Reed with his first catch. First down up near the 45-yard line. You know what I like what Drew Bledsoe is doing here? You'll notice that when teams come into really hostile environments, too many quarterbacks keep the offensive line in a stationary position too long. Drew Bledsoe is getting up to the line of scrimmage and getting the ball out right away. That way, the chance of offside penalties and negative yards doesn't hurt him. Except now, they're going to wind up with an illegal substitution and get five. 12 men in the huddle. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Ed Hockley is our referee tonight. But I think it's really important on the road to not take the unnecessary penalties. We saw it in the uh, Oakland, Tennessee game we did when Barry Sims wound up with five of them. 
And they want to run the football, especially on first and second down. They got they got a they lost a half a yard on first down. Got three tight ends in this formation. Henry off the right side, hitting the backfield, shakes the tackle. We've got about one. Vonnie Holiday made the stop. Last week, Travis Henry ran for a career high 167 on 31 carries and had two touchdowns against the Redskins. It was his first 100 yard game of the season, the ninth of his career, and the two DDs marked the eighth time he has scored multiple touchdowns in a single ball game. Wait a minute, shouldn't this be third down? They ran a running play and then had the penalty for the illegal substitution. No, no, they got a first down on a pass play. Okay. And he got thrown behind Reed, and he got it at the sideline. He's not going to start asking me some dumb things early, is no. he? No. Okay, I just check it. What about Josh Reed? <laughs> I'll tell you, Josh Reed, you take a look at it. Now, he comes, look, this ball is going to be thrown back behind. Eric Warfield is on him. Now, he comes back to the ball. That is a great throw because now the defensive man can't see the ball. Reed had a brilliant game last week. Eight catches, 109 yards. Another running formation. And Bledsoe wants to throw out of it. On the run, sideline, incomplete, and Warfield really laid a lick at the end of it on Bobby Shaw. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're rolling out Drew Bledsoe, Bobby Shaw is there, and just watch this hit, folks. The ball came loose when he went out of bounds, and now this gives Dante Hall an opportunity. Everybody, This is what everybody comes here for now. Yeah, but I, it's, I'll be surprised to see him touch this ball. This will be a directional kick to the left-hand side of the field, out of bounds. There's more pressure on Brian Mormon than anybody in this ball game. Mormon, high floater. Dante Hall will make a fair catch to nine, and they actually punted the ball in bounds. I am surprised, but a heck of a punt, 38 yards, and no return. Kansas City's first possession starts at the 10. You know what? Everything's Priest Holmes, Priest Holmes. I wouldn't be surprised if they just come out and fire them deep down the field. Why not? Or give it to Priest Holmes. Holmes has five, ten, first down. Lawyer Malloy on the tackle. Check it. It was a five-yard game. For Kansas City's offense, Will Shields sets the standard for linemen. An eight-time Pro Bowler. He's starting his 167th straight game. Tony Gonzalez has 417 career catches, number one all-time for the Chiefs. He stretches the field as well, as well as any tight end ever. And Priest Holmes, coming off of a season-high 123 last week, leads all NFL running backs in total yards from scrimmage. Holmes this time off the left side, hit in the backfield and dropped. Pat Williams made the tackle after Aaron Schobel messed up the timing for the Bills defense. Schobel has provided the pass rush with four sacks, almost a third of the team's total. As usual, London Fletcher leads the club in tackles, a middle linebacker with speed and great intensity. Antoine Winfield has become one of the league's best corners, a sure and fearless tackler in spite of his size. I think he's on his way to Hawaii. I mean, this guy here at least makes two big plays every game for the Bills defense. Third and seven for Kansas City. Blitz coming. They pick it up. Green throws sideline. Tennyson dropped the ball. Boy, this was a delayed blitz that really never got there. This this was too too far to go. They ran Pearson Prelude, number 23, from the safety position. He never gets there. And look at the time. Tennyson's out to the outside. He's open. He just drops the football. This should have been a first down. Perfectly thrown and just couldn't handle. It'll bring up a fourth and seven. Baker will come on to pick to Antonio Brown, who's only averaging 4.3 yards. Oh. And a turn block. Out of the end zone, that's a safety. That was number 23, Pearson Prelude. He got there this time. Yeah, he was late on the blitz, but he was there for the punt. Boy, well, Danny Smith, the special teams coach of the Bills. I was talking to Greg Williams down on the field before the game. He said, there are some opportunities. They don't block. Look at that. They don't block anybody oh. up the middle. Prelude right up the middle. 
Well, I, you know, that is, to me, that's amazing. If you're going after someone and you're going to block as the, as the offense or the punt team, you have got to block the middle first. That is the closest way to get to the punter. The outside guy should never get there. Well, now all of a sudden you're going to see Kansas City start making some real <laughs> adjustments in what they do, and it could create some opportunities from the outside now for a punt block. First time the Chiefs have had one block since October of 97, and really a tough break for the Bills that that ball kicked out of the end zone, a safety instead of a touchdown. Well, it almost took his face off. Yes, it did. <laughs> it staggered him, didn't it? Well, you know what? And when you, when you punt block, and you hear it all the time. You go three yards in front of that kicker because that's where he's going to end up. First of all, as a punter, you can't take that much time in, on the goal line. You've got to put a tight formation in, bring everybody inside, and then let that thing fly well, as gonna, fast as you can. I'm sorry. He's going to get a chance now to punt again. Yeah, but this time he's not going to have a rush. McGee and Brown go back to near the 20 yard line. Antonio Brown from the 22. Nice cut. Then nowhere to go. Looking for a wall. Got a block down the sideline. This guy can fly. Got a pass midfield. He watched the old Dante Hall movie. <laughs> 27 yard return Gary Stills ran him out of bounds so two big special little jazz going two nothing on the Chiefs after the block pump results in a safety and they'll start from their own 46 after the free kick Travis Henry to the 49 you take a look at this block what happens is you'll see Coy Wire, number 27, go one way, and then Pearson Prelo comes around the corner for the block. The fullback has to pick him up. Nice job. Actually, what happens with the center, uh, he just doesn't block anybody. <laughs> he didn't even see anybody. Well, he came in there. He almost took it off his foot. Henry Boy, reaches the Kansas City 48. I'll tell you, Travis Henry has got some power. What they do is they put Newfeld, who is a tight end, they put him in the backfield as the blocker, and then they run Travis Henry right off tackle. But Henry, Tra Travis Henry is one of those guys that has really, since he's back off his injury, Joe, is now really running downhill. You look at the touchdown he has. He has eight touchdowns and didn't play in a game and a half so far this season. Third and four, and his teammates, one after the other, praised him for being able to play with serious rib cartilage damage. Bledsoe looking for the first down and throws complete to Eric Moles, who missed a couple with a bad groin injury. You know, it, it, when, you, when you look at a the game, there's one guy on this field right now that should not be open, and that's Eric Moles. I mean, he, there's just no way you find 80 and you cover 80 because he is Drew Bledsoe's favorite target. Watch this. He sneaks out. There's nobody really around him. They're bringing number 25 Wesley a safety to try to come all the way over to get Moles, and it's going to work. And if you give Drew Bledsoe that much time, he's going to chew you up. From the 41. Henry straight up the middle. Only got a couple. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Mike, let me give you the injury update on two guys who are out there playing, but maybe both in pain. First, Travis Henry, who, as you mentioned, his teammates so impressed that he's playing with torn rib cartilage. I talked to him moments before kick. He said it is extremely painful that he is still taking an injection before every game. As for Eric Moulds, feeling much better. He looked really good in pregame warm-ups, moving very well. He said he's in all the packages and even some specialty stuff. He's just happy to be back on the field. Boy, they're happy to have him, too, Susie. Three wide receivers. Reed on a flanker screen. And tremendous defense by Sean Barber. He is a playmaker, and they were so excited to get him from Philadelphia. You know, the one thing about it, when you're a linebacker and you're in this position, you got to go now. Watch him move. And he's already gone. He sees the ball coming out. That's his man. 
He has to get out on Josh Reed, and he does. And Travis Henry is supposed to be the guy that's supposed to get a block on him. He can't get there quick enough. Now the crowd starts to become a factor on third and eight for the offensive lineman. What? I can't. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. <laughs> Hello? This is a defense ranked 27th in the NFL. They come with a blitz. Bledsoe, look out from behind. R. Cal Truelock, another injured player just back on the active list. I'm going to tell you something. You've said this a number of times, and I'm going to say this is Bledsoe. This is Bledsoe. The bl he's got to be able to read the blitz and see it, and watch how long he holds the ball. He just holds it and holds it and holds it. You've got to get rid of the ball. Now they have to punt. Dante Hall waits at his 10 for Mormon. Will he kick it in bounds again? I think he kicks it high and short. I think he kicks it left and out of bounds. But they got delay a game. That'll back him up five yards. He kicked it left, but that stayed in bounds. You know, it's interesting, Four guys. The ball was snapped. Ball start. Offense number 57. Five-yard penalty. It's still fourth down. We sit here and have the debate on where he's going to kick it, what he's going to do. Imagine the special teams coaches when they face a Dante Hall. I mean, you're, you're sitting over there, you're Danny Smith, you're the special teams coach. You've got all these things to worry about, just trying to keep the ball out of this one guy's hands. What I don't understand is why Dante Hall puts himself on one side of the field or the other. Line yourself up in the middle. Well, he is sort of. No, he isn't sort of. Mormon aims for the near sideline and crushes one. And just kicked it into the end zone. 53 yard kick no return trying for the coffin corner and Hall frustrated at the inability to get a shot to get here the go Christmas shoplifting I love it <laughs> be careful Chiefs start from their own 20 down two nothing Trent Green out of the shotgun. Deep sideline incomplete just off the hands. Defended very well by Nate Clements as they went for Johnny Morton. We talked about how Kansas City has not dominated players, but here's how good they have been everywhere. Second in the NFL on offense, almost 30 points a game. The defense, although they've given up a lot of yards, 20 takeaways and special teams. Four returns for touchdowns. Two of them have been game winners. This one's complete very close to a first down at the 30. And I think when you, when you look at this football team, you see that the contributions have come from every element. They were a very offensive-minded team a, a year ago with Dick Vermeil. They had to get better on the defensive side, and that's exactly what they've done. No huddle. Draw play. Home. Nice job of defending that one. Well, what the Buffalo Spikes was the first man to hit him. What the Bills are doing is that they, well, obviously, they're very aware of Priest Holmes. So that what they're doing is, for, the first thing for them is primary is that stop Priest Holmes. Now, if you're going to throw, they're going to go man-to-man -man on the outside and let you try to beat him deep. And that's where the Chiefs have to win with their wide receivers. There's a, pl a flag, too. Now, there is a penalty thrown in the direction of Eddie Kennison. Now, I don't know whether it's going to be on him or on one of the Buffalo Bills. Well, if they won't kick it to him, you put him in and throw it to him. Personal. Oh, man. Personal foul against Kansas City. Now, I don't know why Eddie Kennison did whatever he did. After the play was over, personal foul. Unnecessary rough in this offense, number 87. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. The touchdown counts. The most important part of that, the touchdown counts. We talk about them spreading them out and going quick count. There's Dante Hall. They, if the Buffalo Bills don't want to kick to him, then the Kansas City Chiefs say, we'll figure out another way to get him the football so that he can get into open spaces. Just a... Four goes down the field and let Trent Green figure out the one he wants to throw to. The ageless Morton Anderson for the point after. And Kansas City 
jumps on top seven to two. Dante Hall. He had to make this team as a wide receiver two years ago and did. Dante Hall gets his first grab for a touchdown to put the Chiefs on top seven to two. Yeah, first offensive touchdown. Yes. <laughs> Been lighting him up on kick and punt returns. Now after the penalty, Baker will have to kick off from his own 15. Antonio Brown from the 27 up to the 45. Dick Vermeil, a very emotional coach. And he loved that. City with the Chiefs on top of the Bills, 7-2 first quarter. The Bills have had great field position in this game and have not been able to take advantage of it. They have started on an average their own 42. Bledsoe with time just tipped. Maslowski got a hand on it. The, the no huddle offense creates problems. You see Antoine, that's, that's Dante Hall. That's Antoine Winfield and Lawyer Malloy in the middle. They both take their respective drops in the zone. Now Trent Green gets the ball out so quickly, just as Dante Hall clears Antoine Winfield, he hits him in that hole, and now it's a foot race. That's 47 yards after the catch, and the Chiefs lead the league in the longest pass plays, or I should say yards per play. That'll help the average. Second and ten. Travis Henry slips the tackle, crosses midfield to the Kansas City 49. And, Mike, I want to take a second here. There's a guy in, that's not in the stadium tonight, Lamar Hunt, who is recovering from surgery in the hospital, and he sends his best to everybody. And Lamar Hunt and Ralph Wilson were one of the original AFL guys. He's sorry he can't be here tonight. He's doing great, wants to send his best along to everybody and all the Chiefs fans that have wished him well. And he, he would love to be here. He's missed like one or two games in his life. One so. of the class acts in this game. I've known him since 1960 when I started yeah. with the Los Angeles Chargers. Somebody's calling him right now just to say hello. Blitz. Bledsoe with time throws underneath. Incomplete intended for Mark Campbell as tight end. But again, good defense by Kansas City. Scott Fujita on the coverage that time. Dante Hall, okay. Well, you know, here's the situation that it really is. Mormon is in, in, in field position where he can kick the ball out of bounds. He can kick the ball, you know, 60 yards in the air. So he's got to try to put the ball out of bounds at about the 10 and not worry about the end zone. But Hall, make sure it goes out of bounds. Hall is averaging a ridiculous 21 yards of punt return. End over end flopper. And this one will get out of bounds inside the 15. Who is the NFL's MVP so far? Is it Priest Holmes? 994 yards in total offense from scrimmage. Dante Hall with those four kick returns. How about Peyton Manning having a brilliant season? Or Steve McNair? Or the unbelievable Randy Moss? Eight touchdowns, 791 yards receiving. You can vote right now logging on to ESPN.com, and we'll give you the results in the fourth quarter. And even one more, Stephen Davis. I mean, those guys, that's a tough choice. Yes, it is. It's a tough choice. It's hard when you only have to put five up. Yeah. Flanker screen goes absolutely nowhere. But that's interesting. The Chiefs are trying any way they can to get the ball in the hands of Dante Hall and let him use his skills as a runner because he was a running back before they moved him to wide receiver. Get him into open spaces, let him make his move and go. Watch his feet, watch the quickness. He's in the air, plants, cuts, now come back. Look at how he gets Lawyer Malloy going outside and he just mount, barely him, manages to get an arm around him. It's not Barry Sanders, but it's about as close as you can oh, get. He's got great feet, man. Brent Green tries to throw underneath again to Priest Holmes, battered away by Pat Williams. Trent Green was brought in three years ago when Dick Vermeil got the job here in Kansas City. He went and got a guy he was very familiar with. Of course, Trent Green could well have been the quarterback of the St. Louis Rams, but he got hurt, 
became expendable, and now he's leading the Chiefs someplace where Vermeil would love him to go again to the Super Bowl. Third and nine for Green, and that's right through the hands of Mark Bolrector. Well, you know, they had the matchup I think that they really wanted. They had Takeo Spikes on Gonzalez, but Gonzalez ran the pattern short. He wouldn't have had the first down anyway. So that's why they went downfield, or Trent Green went downfield with the ball. Well, that's, that's two drops that Green's been Kennison, perfectly on target. Kennison has one, and then Bo Richard with that one. Baker to kick to Brown. Short. Brown's going to let it bounce, and it kicks back into Kansas City territory across the 50. Let's go to Susie. Mike, in trying to explain what went wrong with the Bills after an incredibly fast start, Drew Bledsoe explained that they may have slipped in their attention to detail, that they were making way too many mistakes in practice. He said that's something he takes very personally. He wanted the rest of the team to take it to heart as well. They needed to focus, get back on track. He said practices have been very clean and very sharp the last couple of weeks. They're coming off a big win. We'll see if it translates again tonight. And Susie, they're desperate to keep it going. And in addition to the poor punt, there's going to be a face mask penalty on top of it. Buffalo has had incredible field position in his first quarter. You, they have two points to show for it. You can't keep doing it. Can't, I mean, no. you can't keep giving them the ball on, uh, at midfield. This is the fourth possession is going to be at midfield for Buffalo. I mean, if you're Kansas City and they come out of this thing with just two points with all this field position, you've got to consider yourself lucky. Bring your return, personal foul, face mask. By the kicking team number 85, while attempting to get to the runner. That's a 15-yard penalty. penalty from the end of the run. First down. That's Bo Richter, who dropped the ball that would have given them a first down. And all oh, does he have a hole? Geez, let go. Yeah. Well, you, you know that's that's one of the things that you really got to pay attention to in your middle of the field. Kevin Thomas. This is twice now they've had a 15-yard penalty. Stupid penalty. Your defense is playing well. Don't put him in a bigger hole than they're already in. Bledsoe, short set to Molds, Warfield, solid tackle. Well, you know, when, when, you, when you see Eric Molds run out, Joe, I was watching him the whole time. He goes in motion, then he goes out in the flat, and he looked wide open, and that's what Drew Bledsoe saw, wide open. Watch this. He's out there. You think he's by himself? Then look at Warfield. Bam! I, think I mean, that's a two-yard game. Eric Warfield, to me, has elevated his play this year. They had a big interception in the Monday night game last week. Now you see him making open field tackles on an all-pro receiver. He's a seventh-round pick out of Nebraska. Chiefs moving defensive players everywhere. Bledsoe throws it, and nobody home. Thought his receiver was going to go inside instead of outside. Well, they, they want intentional grounding, but actually Eric Moles was supposed to go to the outside, and he didn't. He goes inside, and Drew Bledsoe threw the ball where he thought he was going to be. See, I, I don't believe that this should be an intentional grounding. Neither do I. When, when he wasn't under pressure, he didn't throw the ball away. Watch what he's going to do. He's looking out to the right, three-step drop. He's not under pressure trying to avoid a sack. I think this is a good, good no call. This is an excellent job by Ed Hockley and his staff. And that's a great point you make, Joe. Part of that rule is throwing it away to avoid a sack. And you're right. He was under no pressure. No, Moles just went the wrong way. He was throwing the ball where he thought that Eric Moles was supposed to be. Luckily, I never had that happen to me when I was no, you, I just threw it in the wrong place all the time. When you threw it over the middle, though, it was mostly batted down. Third and eight. The Chiefs trying to call timeout, and they get it. Ryan Sims didn't like something he saw and gets a timeout. Next Sunday night at 7.30, watch NFL primetime to get caught up on all the day's actions. Then Dante Culpepper, Randy Moss, and the Vikings will host Brett Favre, Amon Green, and the Packers on ESPN Sunday. There's confrontation going on, so that adds a little more spice to the game next week. I'll tell you, Randy Moss, you think that guy doesn't know where he is. You talk about awareness on a football field, but nobody does it better the than he The greatest does. receiving skills I have ever seen in all the years of football. Absolutely. Big play here, third down after great field position again for the Bills. 
Bledsoe can't find anybody. Has to dump it off to Campbell. And Campbell is wrapped up immediately by Scott Fujita, the second-year linebacker out of Cal, who they just love. Last year, Greg Robinson, the defensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, caught all kinds of grief because he blitzed too much. They were a little bit too aggressive. What you're seeing now in long yardage situations is a little bit more zone, and it's a not allowing Greg Williams' offense to be able to go out and pick it up. A little bit of a change in philosophy for the Chiefs on defense. Ryan Lindell will try his longest field goal of the year, 49 yards. Hooked it wide. Boy, well, he had the distance. He had, he had enough distance. You just wonder how many chances, and being around athletics all our lives, I, I'm firmly convinced you only get so many chances, and then there aren't any more, and the Bills have had more than their share in this first quarter. Well, I, you know, give credit to the Kansas City Chiefs defense. I mean, yeah. and not, you know, not in the ineptness, ineptness of the Buffalo Bills sure. offense, but the defense has really created all this. Totally agree. I mean, offensively, they've dropped two first downs. They've had a face mask penny on penalty on special teams. So what you're getting is you're not getting the contributions from two elements, but one is keeping you in the game. And that's the story of the Chiefs' success. Back to the ground game with Priest Holmes across midfield into Buffalo territory. Well, this is a guy who was at Texas, the starter, got hurt, replaced by Ricky Williams. Then he was the starter at Baltimore, replaced when they drafted Jamal Lewis. He has not exactly been replaced by guys just off the street, but here he gets his real chance. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, he's also got a fullback in front of him, Tony Richardson, that's, that's right there. Look at him. Well, you could have called Tony for holding a little bit, but, you know, as long as they don't throw the flag, it's okay. Ran right through the arms of Sam Adams, and that's a lot of arm to run for. Holmes on the toss. Oh, down to the 42, gang tackled there. That, that was such a wonderful job of showing patience as a runner. You'll notice when he got the ball how he just slows down enough to allow the front guys up front. You got Jason Dunn and you've got Willie Wolf on the left side. Watch the patience. Watch number 77. See how he just slows down? All right, now let me get out in front of Brian Waters and Willie Rolf, number 54 and 77. Then I'll make my cut up the field. Willie Rolf, a lot of people thought his career was done when he left New Orleans. Had all sorts of problems, injuries, locker room, and has come back to play at a Pro Bowl level again. Gonzalez. Fourth set of bounds inside the 20. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they are trying to cover Tony Gonzalez with Lawyer Malloy, number 36. And folks, that ain't going to work. Watch this. Here goes Gonzalez over the middle. And this is a perfect pass. Well, what happens on that one, you see London Fletcher is up trying to put pressure on. It's a play action fake of a draw. You draw the middle linebacker up, and Lawyer Malloy is dead trying to cover the middle of the football field. Tony Gonzalez is specialized in the big plays here in Kansas City. Holmes inside the 15. The Chiefs, the NFL's only unbeaten team at the end of one, 7-2 over the Bills. 7 next week going on 37 <laughs> and tickled to be back in the game felt he left a little prematurely when he left the job in st. Louis and boy look out for the Rams Mike March has got him playing big-time football again Chiefs in the red zone have been outstanding scoring nearly 30 points a game Green underneath Gonzalez, the big tight end inside the five. First down. I'll tell you what, I can't believe this. I just cannot believe this. He is the best tight end in all of football. And Tony Gonzalez, watch this. Nobody's on him. Well, he has five to seven yards to the first defensive player. I don't disagree with you, but the fact of the matter is that offensive line gave Trent Green so much time that the receivers were able to stretch the secondary and the linebackers back around the five-yard line and give him a chance to have that cushion. Did you disagree with me? I didn't. Yeah, really. <laughs> Two tight ends of the game. Holmes on the run. Cuts back. Touchdown. 
his 10th rushing touchdown of the year. Casey Wegman, I'll tell you what, he pulls out the center, pulls out number 62, and he really didn't have to block anybody. Priest Holmes follows him in. Watch 62, the center. He comes out, Richardson gets a block. Look at this. He didn't even really have to block anybody until he got to the goal line. Bang! It's all open. That's too easy. Four carries, 25 yards on this drive. Morton Anderson point after. And the Kansas City Chiefs now lead 14-2 over the visiting Buffalo Bills. Stuff too. Did that look good? Oh, <laughs> didn't that look good? Look good. We've been eating it since we got here. <laughs> Squid kick Antonio Brown at the 14. Takes it up to the 34. <laughs> If you just joined us, the Bills got on the board first with a blocked punt that resulted in the safety. The Chiefs came right back. Dante Hall does it with his feet, and then Priest Holmes does what he does best, find the end zone. And the Buffalo Bills have got to find some kind of an answer, at least get a couple of first downs, and don't put their defense right back on the field again. Henry, the single setback this time. He'll get the carry. Ran through a tackle by Fujita and picked up a few. I just sit here thinking about what, what Drew Bledsoe said to us last night, Joe, when the, when the question was posed about throwing the football. He says, you know, you can win throwing the football sometimes, but you can't win throwing the football all the time. And they're getting themselves in a position where they're going to have to throw the ball because they're not running it. Henry got four on that last one. Bledsoe sideline the balls incomplete. Great coverage by Dexter McLeon. Now, Dexter, uh, excuse me, Eric Moles has been hurt the last couple of weeks, so he hasn't even had a chance to really practice a whole lot. I think any time a receiver takes some time off, he can't make catches like that. Eric Moles always makes a catch like that when he's in his flow. But because he hasn't been able to work with Drew, it's just that little bit of timing that's off for him. Third and six, Bobby Shaw is in as an extra wide receiver. Molds only nine yards on two grabs. Four-man rush against Bledsoe. Throws complete, very close to the stick. Shaw made the catch and then was leveled. And that will be a first down for Buffalo. I'll tell you what's happening here is this defense is quick. Watch how fast they get to Shaw once he catches it. Catch, bang. Well, the other thing is you know Drew Bledsoe isn't going to challenge the perimeters of formations. He's basically going to be in the pocket, and they're going to try and push that pocket in his face so he won't be able to step up and make those kind of throws. Travis Henry. It's about three. Let's go to Susan. Well, Mike, talk about feeling good about defensive additions and decision making in the offseason. Check out the production. They signed Holiday from Green Bay, Barber from Philly, McLean from St. Louis, where he was in Vermeil's first rookie class and saw the defense rise from last to top ten. Sims and Woods were sidelined most of last year with injury. All five have already received game balls. Woods got two of them. That's a pretty good record. Susie, it's terrific. They've gotten great production out of those guys. And they cut the scoring average by a touchdown from last year. Blitz coming on Bledsoe. Flips it late and got it out to Newfeld, the tight end. Newfeld got close to the sticks and has the first down. What really, and to go along with what Susie said, when you add that many people, you can't be as complex as they were a year ago. One of the things that Jerome Woods talked to us about was that Greg Robinson has so many things and brings so much to the table they tried to simplify it a little bit make it a little bit easier for the players just to use their abilities instead of trying to think where they're supposed to be all the time the other benefit they've been able to start the same 11 guys on defense all year long and now kansas city will take a timeout on defense and we'll be back to kansas city 1203 to go in the half the wait is over. Will the react had the ball as much in the first quarter? And they're not putting any pressure on him either.
Bledsoe to throw on first down. Reed makes the catch. Ball came loose. Picked up by McLeon. Kansas City says they have it. No whistle that we know of. And Josh Reed says, I was down. I was down. And Greg Williams is saying, wait a second. Now the officials will talk about it. Now they want to take a look at it. I'll tell you what, forward progress now. I mean, I don't know. Does that come into effect here? Here's Reed here catching the ball. It was then fumbled, picked up, recovered by Kansas City. Yeah. First down. The question is, I mean, Ooh. you know, this is, to me, he's not going anywhere. They're holding him up. The ball, and while the ball comes out, he yeah, doesn't hit the ground. That's a fumble. He's trying a little bit of extra effort. And they finally get it past block. They finally get it taken care of. Then all of a sudden, the ball goes on the ground. Now, he's had some trouble hanging on to the football as far as catching it goes, but not necessarily putting it on the ground once he's had it in his hands. Looked like Maslowski got a hand in there to rip it out. And Ed Hockey Lee is over talking to Greg Williams. Buffalo is challenging the ruling on the field that the ball was fumbled. make their decision in judgment. Here's Ed Hockulate. Buffalo challenged whether the, ball, whether the knees were down before the ball came out. After reviewing the play, the, the runner's knees were still on top of a player's body. Therefore, they weren't, didn't touch the ground. The ball was fumbled. The ruling on the field stands as called. Kansas City's ball, first down. Buffalo is charged with their first time out. But you know what? I think that was an excellent challenge by Greg Williams because if he lets the play go, all the momentum is still flowing in Kansas City's way. Now, it's still going that way, but at least you've had a little bit of a break in the action to hopefully settle down your ball club and give your defense a chance to get a few extra seconds rest. And another takeaway for that Chiefs defense. They lead the NFL with 21 and immediately go to Kennison, picks up about nine and a half yards. Now, the Bills defense has not allowed a single touchdown after any of the turnovers this year. They have gone 12 straight turnovers without giving up a score. This was the 13th. Well, I'll tell you one thing that they better do. They better get some better coverage than, than they are so far because Trent Green is hot. That Everything that he throws is right on target. They have dropped a couple that have hit him right in the hand. This guy's solid tonight. Now you got Priest Holmes split out wide. Tony Gonzalez moving over. Richardson, the big fullback, who at one time was the leading ball carrier for this franchise. I want to take you through the sequence of that play. First of all, you split Priest Holmes out wide. There's movement in the secondary. Then you bring Tony Richardson over. Now you train, change the strength of the formation. Then you take Johnny Morton, and you move Johnny Morton out in motion to the right. And look at the crater that's created on the right-hand side as Tony Richardson cuts back. That's as much a product of the movement of all the people in the secondary as opposed to even the defense trying to stop the play. Yeah, look at the block of that offensive line. I mean, they are just handling Buffalo. Green under pressure. Picking up yardage and slides safely at the 32. You know what's happening? I'm telling you with this offensive line how good they are. They don't quit. They don't quit. Takeo Spikes is down. But this offensive line, I'll tell you what. There, there was a play, Willie Rolfe at the end of this play. He comes back to help Trent Green, the big tackle, number 77. Now, Willie Rolfe is just blocked down the side. Look at them on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, watch him come back. He comes back to help out. Takeo goes down. Well, his own man fell on his leg. Paul, these five guys on that line started every game last year and they have started every game this year. And you know how important that offensive line is, the consistency, not to mention how good these guys are. I think it's the single most important thing on offense to keep the five guys healthy and up front. Take a look at the Minnesota Vikings, even though they lost today. Look at the production that Absolutely. they've had on offense for one simple reason. Obviously, besides Randy Moss, their offensive line has stayed intact this year for Mike Tyson. And that 24 games in a row for the Chiefs with the same five linemen, by far the longest streak in the National Football League. Green under pressure, throws sideline incomplete. And Takeo Spikes was all over Trent Green. Well, I'll tell you what, you cannot, you cannot 
let Takeo Spikes run free. Takeo Spikes number 51. We just saw him down. Obviously, he's not hurt. Look at that move he made on Priest Holmes. He just juked him and went right on by him. That's what happens to a back, and it's going to happen. When you duck your head, you miss him. You can't see what's coming. That's right. Takeo Spikes, this guy's a great football player. Keep an eye on Dante Hall. He'll come to the slot of the near side. He's already had one big touchdown catch. Green looking down the middle goes to Holmes. London Fletcher got him from behind just shy of another first down. You know, I asked Priest Holmes, you, you, know, this, you know, it always seems like you're on the side when you catch a ball, that you're always on the side where Tony Gonzalez is. And he smiled. He said, yeah, because he takes all the coverages. So when I get out there, all, there's Gonzalez. I get out there, all I got is a linebacker. The other thing he talked about is part of the reason why he came to Kansas City was because of a star like Tony, uh, like Tony Gonzalez, because he knew he didn't have to be the guy. Tight formation on third and one. Holmes. First down, Fletcher made the tackle but couldn't prevent the sticks from moving. Michael, I don't know how you stop this play. You've got two tight ends on one side. You move the fullback, Tony Richardson, who is a tremendous blocker, to that side. And you've got the whole, all three of these guys. And all three tones has to do is pick up a yard. Look at everybody. Here comes Richardson, number 49. Now look at, they're all there. Dunn, Gonzalez, Richardson. And then they lead up in the hole with the guard, Will Shields, who's one of the better guards in the National Football League. How do you stop it? Only been to eight Pro Bowls. Mm -hmm. Holmes, nice little cut. Breaks to the outside. Touchdown! 13 yards, and he made it look easy. No, the blocking made it look easy, pal. I'll tell you what. Woo! They just buried Antonio Winfield comes in to make the play, and watch this. Richardson just buries him right there. Then they all seal everything to the inside. Dunn, as the, the, the tight end, is number 89, has been getting some great blocks, and he just walked home. At 276, he's like a tackle who can catch and run. 48 yards on the ground for Priest Holmes in the last two drives, both ending up with touchdown runs. And Morton Anderson knocks another one through, and the Chiefs are displaying their best offense perhaps of the year. They've scored 21 first-half points. Seven thirty-five to go in the half. The Chiefs on top, 21 to two. That massive athletic offensive line doing its job on the last two drives. Priest Holmes with two touchdowns. Dick Vermeil said, yes, we're undefeated, but we know we're not a perfect football team. We have a lot of work to do. You couldn't prove it by the way they're playing tonight. Antonio Brown from the 16. Tremendous speed takes him up to the 44. Let's go to Susie Galbert. Well, Mike, one thing you should know about Priest Holmes, he loves the game of chess since he was a little kid. He loves it because he said it's a thinking man's game. And you can strategize on how to beat your opponent before you ever take the field. He calls himself a bishop because the bishop moves diagonally and he's a slasher. He says if the defense is aggressive, there are ways to use that against them. If the defense is passive, he can capitalize on that too. And of course he laughs when he says he considers his offensive lineman that he uses in front of him. Susie, to continue with your alliteration, he might be the king. Blood so throws underneath to Henry. He gets five. That's 11 touchdowns on the ground for this guy. Yep. yep. <laughs> and this is only the eighth game. <laughs> We're in week eight. I know. I know. I mean, it's amazing. You know, he's such a nice kid, like, you too. Know, the, you yeah. can't help but root for him. And the other thing is, too, this is a guy who had a hip surgery. I mean, back in March, he had a hip they didn't know whether he'd be healthy enough to be able to play this year. Guess he's proven them. Blitz coming on a delay. Bledsoe. Nice pass. Has the first down down to the 37-yard line. Let me just say one other thing about this Kansas City Chiefs team. And if the Buffaloes, they're throwing the ball now, and they're moving it. But the Kansas City Chiefs defense, you know, they are not ranked in the top. I mean, they're in 20-something and, and everything. But the thing about it is they're 7-0 and going into this football game. Right. They put up more points than anybody else. They did that a year ago. So, you know, they'll bend a whole lot, but they don't break much. 
Empty backfield for Bledsoe on first down. Reed cut down as soon as he got it at the 30 solid tackle by Fujita. Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator of the Bills, is now doing what Kansas City did on that touchdown pass to Dante Hall. He is spreading Kansas City's defense out. That makes it more difficult for them to get pressure on Drew Bledsoe. Drew's a big guy. That means that he can stand in the middle and throw the quick routes. They can throw their quick passing game. This is a good move by Kevin to get some momentum for his offense. Henry the deep man on third and second and four. And he'll get the draw play. Dragging a tackler with him down to the 24. Fujita on another stop. The third leading tackler on this club coming in. Fujita, you would think by the name he is Japanese. The family that adopted him is Japanese. He is not. And several times, he has had to show a photo ID to prove he is who he says he is. Well, here he had to show Travis Henry that he could hold on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Got a free ride for about four yards. They come with a blitz. Caught at the 18 by Josh Reed, his sixth grab of the night. We talked about Josh Reed having problems. He had eight last week against the Skins for 109 and a touchdown. But prior to last week, he really struggled catching the football. Here he does a nice job. So he, what he did, he went back and looked at the film. He talked to Eric Moles, got some drills before practice, looked back at his film at LSU, and said, I just got to go back and relax and do the things that got me here. Because he was the Bolitnikoff winner in college. He has great hands. He was just thinking too much. Play fake by Bledsoe. Reed again inside the 10 yard line you know when you get a young man like reed who struggled so much in the beginning of the season joe and you know he's such a great receiver as you were talking about in college and now he's hot again and he's catching throw him the football yeah just good look at him get him the ball he gets the ball looks for the hole picks up the first down make sure you keep him involved well here's the other thing you haven't had eric moles at practice for three weeks so you know drew bledsoe's developed a comfort level with josh reed and Bledsoe on this drive has hit all five throws. Henry on the sweep. <laughs> Driving those legs inside the five to the two. Tough run by Travis Henry. Now, I'm going to tell you what. He's got the offensive line out in front of him, but Travis Henry is the guy that moves it all. When he hits up in there, watch how the offensive line, now he makes them explode. The toss is to Henry. Here's the offensive line. They almost look like they're stopped. Watch this. Travis Henry just takes everybody for another five yards. He gets on the back of Ryan Newfeld, 88, says, go ahead, I'll ride you in. <laughs> now Sam Gash, the great blocking fullback, is in front of Henry. Fake by Bledsoe, throws for the end zone and missed a wide open day four. There wasn't anyone within seven or eight yards of more. Yeah, but they had Eric Hicks in his face, and Eric Hicks, number 98, the left defensive end, did not take the fake. He just stayed with it. He's the guy that makes Drew Bledsoe throw the ball high. On the right of your screen, look at 98. He gets up in the air. Nah, Paul, no, he didn't get up in the I'm, air. All right, he didn't get up in the air. Even he, if he nah. did, I don't, I don't mean to disagree with you, my good friend. Don't ever disagree with you. There's no me. way, man. He's got to make that throw. Boy, a missed opportunity there. Now it's third and goal. Bledsoe short set almost intercepted intended for Shaw. That would have been a hundred yard return for Greg Wesley, who already has two interceptions this year. Well, I, I'll tell you one thing too, and I, I don't, you know, it's early in the game. You're, you're right near the end of the second quarter, but a field goal here. They, they should have been running the football. I'm sorry. The one, all right, you're right. You should have hit the pass. Yeah, I That's mean, it's, it's it, this is what you have to do. I don't think you run it in. I think this is a good decision by Greg Williams. You get some points on the board. You don't want to get shut down on fourth down uh, after a drive like this when you've gained some momentum back. Lindell, who missed from long range, will try a chip shot and knocks it through. So the Bills have a safety and a field goal in the first half. You have to kick to Dante. 
Yes, you do. <laughs> you have or to kick, kick it out of Dante. bounds and give him the ball <laughs> on the 40. 40. You have to kick to Dante. I, Neither I, one is a real good option. All the years we've been doing this, Mike, you and I have been together 17, probably we've been here six years. Never have we had such discussion about how somebody should punt or kick off to one individual. And like I said, our conversations are minuscule by comparison to special teams coaches trying to figure out what to do with this guy. Eight men have returned four kicks in a year for a touchdown. Dante Hall is the eighth. But he did it at the very beginning of the year. He still has a whole half season to go to break the record. And he's had seven kick returns for scores in 12 games. That's what's amazing. If you go back to last year, in 12 games, he has returned seven kicks for touchdowns. That is absolutely phenomenal. Well, but, I mean, who's he got to blame if they kicked away from him? Would you? I, I'm, I'm serious. I've never I never see the I ball. said to Michael in the opening, would you, would, if you were Buffalo, would you give him the ball? No. And you they're know. going to try to put this ball away from him. Well, I think what they might do is, is line up in a little bit of a unique formation, get the Kansas City Chiefs looking around a little bit, and then try and kick it through the end zone. There they go. There it is now. This is not going to be an onside kick. This is to get the Chiefs to come up so that Dante's blocking is all screwed up and now try and kick it into the end zone. And Dante's up to the 20-yard line. And they do kick it deep, and that is nice. Yeah, he's going to return it. But Hall retreats to the one. <laughs> Look at these cuts. Not this time. Good job by Take the Bills. Down the 17, Coy Wire who lost his starting job to Lawyer Malloy in a late deal when he was released by New England. Coy Wire lost his job, has not complained one day about it. He has just become a terrific special teams player. You know what I don't understand is why the Kansas City Chiefs went for the for the onside kick thing. When you put the ball straight on, on, on the tee like they did, they have to kick it down the field. There aren't any guys that I know of that can kick it left or right from there. Let's think about it. There's two minutes and 47 seconds to go in the half. You're down. There. You're up 21-5. They're going to onside kick? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But, but you've got to respect it. That's right. They line up in that formation. Trent Green. Right down the middle to Kennison after the 35-yard line. You know what I really like? You know, we talked to Trent about this. When you get ahead and then they pull the reins back, how do you like it? He said, I've never liked it. And I know you've never liked it either. I like what they're doing. They're they're, at, they're 21 to 5 up. They're going after him. Look at the lane that he has to throw the ball. And what really creates the opportunity is a small play action fake. We've seen how hard Priest has run. So the Bills defense has to respect it. That gives Eddie Kennison and Johnny Morton, the other receiver, lots of room to work in the secondary. Green has already thrown for 150 yards in the first half. Pump fake. Dante Hall! Boy, I'm going to tell you what. You want to talk. I said the Trent Green is on target. This is the perfect pass. You talk about right between two defenders. you got Dante Hall. This was beautiful. What's going to happen is this is Dante Hall right here. He's going to go out, run a little pump, and then he's gone up the field. They're going to get Kevin Thomas, who plays the corner up top. A little bit of stop and go, pump inside. Dante Hall does a nice job of getting close to the sidelines, but yet leaving Trent Green an opportunity to be able to throw the ball in the hole for the big completion. Hey, I saw Priest Holmes two days ago playing... Dominoes without a shirt on. Don't chest, tell me. Chest. No, he was playing dominoes. He plays everything, but he's playing dominoes with the guys. You talk about a he's big, he's big man, scary man. Green sits in the pocket, throws underneath, and solid. Down to the 27-yard line. Kansas City with one timeout remaining. Michael, you we just cannot say enough about this offensive line. He's got all day to throw the football. Well, the other the other thing is too is they're not making they're not making stupid penalties, offsides, holdings, things like that in the offensive line. That after big plays we see so often teams having to go second down and 20 again. This is the least penalized team in football, and that's a trademark of what Dick Vermeil's teams were. And that's that veteran group up front. Green again with plenty of time. Underneath, complete to Kennison. And keep in mind, 
This is against the number three defense in the NFL. Number three in total yards, number three in points allowed. They're only giving up 15 and a half points a game on the average. Well, let me just tell uh, some of the other players that are watching this game from other teams. These guys on Wednesday and Thursday, every Wednesday and Thursday, they practice for two hours and 45 minutes. They work pretty hard. Another completion, Dante Hall over 100 yards at the 14-yard line. Kansas City only has one timeout left. It is so impressive the time that Trent Green has. He doesn't hold the ball long, but watch how he's able to step up and make his throws on balance. Nobody in his face, perfectly able to throw up, throw the ball up the field, and, and with no pressure. Gonzalez at the seven. This is just pitch and catch right now. And Kansas City will use this last timeout. Coming up at the half, the Kia Halftime Show with Chris Berman will have the fastest three minutes in television. All the highlights, Boomer's Halftime Heroes, and our Sunday Stud Update. That's all coming up on the Kia Halftime Show. And Dick Vermeil's team hitting on all <laughs> cylinders. You know, there are a lot of people that don't remember when Dick Vermeil coached at Philadelphia because he took a 14-year break to be a broadcaster. But when you look at what he did at Philadelphia, the turnaround he had there, the turnaround he had with St. Louis was resulted in the Super Bowl championship. And the turnaround he has made here, Dick Vermeil does not get the credit he deserves. No, he really doesn't. And you, you look at the way they moved this offense. Again, they were up to, up 21 to 5. And you would think with two minutes, you know, kind of kind of mix it up, run the clock out. Not get these in. guys. Not these guys. And they, have, they took a timeout with 25 seconds on a first down. They could put the ball in the end zone three times. Green, no pressure again. Throws intended for Kennison incomplete. And Izell Reese got over there to cover him. The Buffalo Bills going in, coming out in the second half, have got to figure out some type of a pressure package on Trent Green so that he can't stand back there and just throw the football. I give Al Saunders, the offensive coordinator of the Chiefs, a lot of credit. He is spreading them out sideline to sideline and making the Buffalo Bills spread themselves out in a all over the field and he's just letting the guys find the hole that that play there only took four seconds yes we were in kansas city <laughs> second and goal green lost control of that one and very fortunate that nate clemens couldn't come up with the interception nobody expected it to be in the air quite that quickly <laughs> i mean <laughs> that badly this one this is a squirter i think this is just a squirter Whoop. Sometimes it squirts out. The ball gets slick on a cold night, and <laughs> this thing just comes out like a duck fluttering through the air. <laughs> if the Bills can... Wait, that, that was a bad looking pass. Pass. <laughs> if, the, if the Bills can hold them to a field goal here, they will have done something defensively. Third and goal. Green with time for the corner. Incomplete, but there's a flag intended for Bo Richter, but it's going to be interference. No way it couldn't be. Trent Antoine Winfield with the coverage. Trent Green threw this ball. Pass interference, defense number 26. The ball is placed at the one yard line, automatic first down. You watch where Trent Green throws this football. He throws it back and left of Bo Richter. Antoine Winfield can't do anything but try and get back to the ball and he makes contact with the receiver you're going to get a flag every time good job of acting by Bo Richter trying to get back to the ball now you've got it first and goal but no timeouts and only 13 seconds left and Buffalo will use a timeout the residents of greater San Diego as most of you know are suffering from terrible fires public health and safety are now the urgent priorities the city of San Diego has advised us that under these circumstances, Monday night's game between the Chargers and the Dolphins cannot be played at Qualcomm Stadium. NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue has directed that Monday night's game will be played at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona at 9 Eastern. This decision will allow San Diego public safety agencies to maintain their full focus on protecting the lives and property of San Diego residents. The game, of course, will be televised live on ABC as usual at the usual time. But that is a tragic situation all the way from north of Los Angeles 
to south of San Diego for all those people in California. That, and I believe they're using this. I believe they're using the stadium uh, to house people, to house people right. and, and to take care, which is the only thing they can do. And they have no way to slow that thing down either. First and goal. Green, Gonzalez. Well, that looked easy. It works when you can pick somebody. Uh, yeah, you got it. There is a pick on the outside, and you cannot lose. I mean, how do you lose Tony Gonzalez? You know they're going to throw the ball to him. This is, I'm just saying how hot Trent Green is. All right, here it comes. There's the hesitation, a quick move inside. And they're trying to cover with Posey, the strong side linebacker, and that is no, a no-no. No, no, no. Well, Posey's quick, but he's not that quick. Well, this is what all the movement does and the reposition of players. There it is, the old double slam. Not quite up as high as Tyrone Calico today, but pretty good. The former starter for California's basketball team gets another touchdown, and Trent Green is at 14 out of 21, 209 yards and two touchdowns in the first half. Tony Gonzalez, one of only three players in NFL history to lead their teams in receptions. One is in the Hall of Fame, the other will be, and Tony Gonzalez will not be too far behind them. Tony Gonzalez, certainly one of the best that ever lived. Where do you see him fitting in? I mean, he hasn't played that long yet. I think he's a Hall of Famer, and I, think, I, I still think Tony Gonzalez is the best tight end in football. I know Todd Heap is great in Baltimore. I know Jeremy Shockey, Shockey is good in New York. The thing, about, the thing I like about Tony Gonzalez, he's a complete football player. He can block for you. He can still make plays. He doesn't put the ball on the ground. He doesn't get dumb penalties that cost your team yards. He's a tough guy, and, and you can use him as a wide receiver. He never has been able to run by anybody but he still manages to just do the things that tight ends need to do and then add the catching part to it. Plus, Paul, he is held to a higher standard. When he gets a, quote, drop, it is a spectacular catch maybe no one else can make. He catches everything. Well, the other thing about him is, though, he was on this team when they were a bad football team, and he never quit on these guys. And this is, I mean, this is the one guy that held this team together. So you could, they always could count on, on Tony Gonzalez. This guy, there's no questions at all pro. There's, I don't think there's ever a question about him never being in the Hall of Fame. Antonio Brown up to the 35 with four seconds to go in the half. Let's go to Susie. Well, trying to put some perspective on just how good Tony Gonzalez is, I talked to one of his coaches and Hall of Famer Charlie Joyner. He knows Ozzie Newsom well. He played with Kellen Winslow. He said, definitely, Tony Gonzalez is in their class. But what makes it truly scary is that he's still learning. He explained that Winslow molded his game in about five years, but that Tony can still get better. He's working on his blocking. But as for his receiving skills, he said there is no weakness. Well, he is the complete package, and Dick Vermeil loves the guy. Buffalo with one play left in the half. And Bledsoe with a Hail Mary. And it's intercepted by Warfield. The third pick of the nut of the season for Eric Warfield. And the Kansas City Chiefs, the NFL's only undefeated team, are laying one on the Buffalo Bills in the first half. Here's Susie. Well, at halftime, how much do you play on your 30 minutes from being the only undefeated team in football? Well, really, <laughs> we're very pleased with how we played right now. Al Saunders with the offense and directing a real good. Trent is really sharp. The defense has done what they had to do and really stopped him cold early. But right now, we've got to come back out and play like we did it in the first half. If we can do that, then I'll feel very, very good about taking a bye next week. Thanks, Coach. Right. Thank you, Susie. Our score here at Arrowhead, 28-5 Chiefs. Now let's join Chris Berman for the Kia Halftime Show. Hi, Michael. Uh, thank you very much. Wow, the Kansas City Chiefs looking every bit the part of uh, the undefeated team that they are, trying to go 8-0, leading 28 -5. I'm going to get one of Susie's coats. I'm going to negotiate. The Vikings trying to become 7-0. Could they? Here we go with our fastest three as we move toward the Homer Dome and the New York Football Giants with their Rasputin-like head coach, Jim Fossil. Team had lost three in a row. They were under a lot of siege. Meanwhile, Dante Culpepper to Randy Moss, and there was plenty of siege going on. Kerry Collins to Jeremy Shockey. Shockey, watch through the Vikings defense here, setting up 
As the Giants trail 17-16 midway through the fourth, Tiki Barber for a touchdown. They go for two, don't get it. But it's 22-17 and then all good things must come to a close. Donna Culpepper picked off for the first two times this year. That's Frank Walker. The Vikings lose the first time. Giants win 29-17. Cowboys and the Buccaneers. Cowboys have won five in a row, but this time it was Tampa Bay's Brad Johnson and Keyshawn Johnson that gave the champs a 10-0 lead. The headless horseman, Warren Sapp, with a sack even despite his helmet. Coming off, Rondé Barber with a pick in the box. Second shot out of the year. They win 16-0 over the Cowboys. Seahawks and Bengals. Surprise. Corey Dillon, car accident before the game. He didn't play. Rudy Johnson played. Had 100 yards. John Kitten, a one-time Seahawk to Chad Johnson, gone. Bengals stunned the Seahawks 27-24. Rams and Steelers, Mark Bolger, Pittsburgh area native. More on him in the moment to Torrey Holt early first. Rams lead at Pittsburgh 7-0. Arlen Harris, a Pennsylvania high school stud running back, had a pair. Rams win 33-21. 49ers cards, Jeff Garcia, a new play, whacked at the one. Rookie uh, tackle, Quame Harris has the ball. Niners. 13-0, uh, we go to overtime. A lot of kicks missed, but Tim Duncan, good. The cards shock San Francisco, 16-13. Jets, Eagles. Chad Pennington in relief of Vinny Testaverde is advertised, picked off by Michael Lewis of Philly. Philly takes over, and Donovan McNabb first and goal to John Ritchie. Eagles are now 4-3, beat the Jets 24-17. The Texans started fast, but Peyton Manning to stately Wayne Manor. Reggie Wayne out of the back cave. And the Colts beat the Texans 30-21. Titans, Jags, Steve McNair, and the Titans seem to own the Jags. They win it 30-17 in Jacksonville. The New Orleans Saints against Carolina. Deuce McAllister hit by Julius Peppers. It's a fumble. This is Steven Davis then in overtime, and they roll. Davis at 178 yards. John Casey at the foot. Good. Panthers are 6-1. They win 23-20. Browns, Patriots. First winner, double figures, wins. Tim Couch, injured thumb, out. Kelly Holcomb, in. Ty Law, they fought the law, and the law won. The Patriots have won again. They win 9-3, stay in first place. Broncos, Ravens. Ray Lewis with a big pick. Jamal Lewis with another 100-yard game. And the Ravens beat the Broncos 26-6. The Lions have now lost 20 games in a row on the road, the third longest streak ever. Jerry Halls of Montezuma from... University of New Hampshire. Kickoff return. The Bears beat the Lions 24-16. This halftime show is presented by... We win all the games if the Chiefs uh, keep going like this and uh, we might have to change some things. So uh, that's our vote thus far on the Sunday stud. Mike told you a little bit earlier that Monday Night Football, the Dolphins and Chargers, everybody concerned with the fires that have already caused 11 deaths in the San Diego area. The game has been moved to Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe. You'll see it on TV at ABC at the same time at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, and 6 Pacific. But um, our prayers and uh, certainly the Chargers' prayers go out to all the people in San Diego and the county with the terrible fires. 120,000 acres are burning. We hope that they quell that soon. VJ Singh won for the fourth time. This That's him. Well, the other thing is he has a plan for everything. He, his plan to come back. His plan for his salary. Because remember, he didn't. He was a little concerned about coming to camp without a contract. Till so he and Carl Peterson, the president of the Chiefs, sat down and Carl said, "Look, I'm not going to pay you till I know if you're healthy." And when he was a free agent and left Baltimore, he had a list of 15 things that he wanted in a new team. And he got most of them in Kansas City. Well, they're not moving as many people up. You gotta you gotta leave some people back to block for Dante. Well, Hall's up to around the 13-yard line. This is a pretty good scheme for the Bills. Low line drive. Hall from the 11. So quick and just tripped up. May even have been his own man up to the 32. Offensively, the Kansas City Chiefs want to do two things. They want to stretch the field vertically. Here you see Antoine Winfield and Lawyer Malloy going back, one going outside, the other going deep, and Dante Hall going down the middle. But look at the width of the wide receivers, just spreading out that Buffalo defense from sideline to sideline. Now you want to do it in the running game. This was one of Priest Holmes' touchdowns. Good job by the offensive line, but you'll notice Priest starts up the middle, gets an excellent block by Tony Richardson on the corner, Cuts it out. Now he's going sideline to sideline. 
Trent Green as we start the third quarter right back to work throws a perfect strike to the sideline to Eddie Kennison for 16 yards. Did they leave the field at halftime? <laughs> I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. They're still loose and they're still throwing. But I'll tell you, Trent Green is, is playing as well as I've ever seen him play. People forget in 1999 during the preseason in St. Louis, he was absolutely brilliant, almost didn't miss a pass. He was going to be the starting quarterback for that team. That's the year they won the Super Bowl. He was injured. Kurt Warner took over and won it all. Holmes cut down that time by London Fletcher. Talking to London Fletcher last night, of course, very prideful individual. You know, he had the additions added on this football team with Takeo Spikes and Sam Adams and others. But one of the things he said, one of the problems that these Bills ran into was the fact that if something went wrong in a game, they'd find themselves getting down. And they thought they had solved it with the Redskin game last week, coming out and playing. This is going to be a great challenge for them to be able to get their chins up and come out and try and work back into this game. Bo Richter is in. He's the man in motion. Blitz coming. They pick it up again, and Trent Green unloads. Morton. Boy, Nate Clemens. Covered by Nate Clemens. Yeah, Nate Clemens, he just misjudged the ball. He saw the ball coming down. He went up and a little bit too soon. Here he comes. Johnny Morton is the guy. Boy, Nate Clemens just played this thing beautifully. Look at now. He jumped a little bit too soon, and the ball was behind him. Have the Bills gotten there once on the blitz? Uh, yes. Yeah, the Keo Spikes did. Yes, you're right. But they, they're they getting a little closer. Not real close. This but offensive line has done a tremendous job. They're certainly getting enough practice. They've been on the field all night. Another blitz. They bring seven this time, and Green throws incomplete. That time, at least they got some heat. And that's what they have to do. We talked about it at the end of the half. You can't let Trent Green sit back there and pick you apart. Just like... If Drew Bledsoe gets that kind of time, he can be equally as dangerous. So the Bills with a good defensive stand that time will force the punt, and Antonio Brown goes back for the punt of Jason Baker. Beautiful kick. Brown at the six. Oh, he never had a chance. He was just buried by Derek Blaylock. There is a flag down. Boy, Antonio Brown's lucky to get up from that one. And it's against the Bills. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, Kansas City. Half the distance to the goal, correction, Buffalo. Well, they didn't identify anybody. I'm sorry, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, Kansas City. 15-yard <laughs> penalty, Buffalo keeps the ball, first down. Well, they still haven't identified anybody, but it is against Kansas City, and that's a break for the Bills. It's against the guys in the red, though. Apparently. Well, it, all right, here's Blaylock right here. Now, is this... No, it's not. No, wait, 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 wait. It's nothing. Well, his own man knocks him back on top of him. I hope that isn't what they called. Bledsoe into double coverage for Moles, and it's intercepted. Thrown right to Nate Clements. You can't make that throw. Drew Bledsoe's too good a quarterback to make that throw. There's absolutely no way that Eric Moles, he wouldn't be open if he was 100% and healthy. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Friendly non-stop service all across the country. Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. And Toyota, get the feeling. Back here in Kansas City at beautiful Arrowhead Stadium, which has stood the test of time. It's still a great venue. And rocking tonight as Kansas City leads at 28-5. Bledsoe with an ill-advised pass. Picked off. McLeon with his fifth interception of the year. Priest Holmes. Nearly 10 yards before he's driven out of bounds. 
Drew Bledsoe gets a chance for protection. This is a pump and go. That's Eric Moles. That's Dexter McLeon. Moles tries to come inside. McLeon just stays outside because he knows he has safety help. As Moles works himself back towards the numbers, Bledsoe just cuts this loose. And but he's really not open. Nobody's fooled. It's a two-man pattern. You just throw it away and come back. You don't try and force a big play. Drew trying to make a play. Missed one in the end zone and that then made a bad throw right there. It's his second pick of the night. Richardson with one of those rare carries. Fighting for first down yardage. You know, one of the things about the Buffalo Bills is it's just they got a first down on this play here, Kansas City, but the Buffalo Bills in the last five and a half games now, because we're in the second half of this game here, they don't have a play from scrimmage over 30 yards, Joe. Well, look at the stat. Eight possessions, three punts, three turnovers, and a missed field goal. And considering they spent the entire first quarter at in or Kansas about midfield yeah. or in Kansas City territory to have five points. You know, Drew misses a wide open receiver in the end zone and then you make a throw like that. They've got to settle down. They're not out of this thing because Drew Bledsoe can light it up. And around Morton. Boy, is this good defense. This is excellent defense. Winfield no one took stayed home. <laughs> oh, he's your favorite player anyway. Antoine Winfield is probably, he, and he told us, he says, I am the best corner tackler in the National Football League. And I don't think there's anybody who's going to dispute that. Can't argue with that. No. I think, I, think he's, I think he's one of the top corners. Just his tackling ability, I think, makes him outstanding. But his cover skills are fabulous as well. He's one of the toughest guys you could ever have on a ball club. Knows how to play cover, too. Can go man-to-man -man if he needs it. If you want him to be a support corner, he'll take on a, a guard. He doesn't care. He's 5'9", 180. He'll just come up in anybody's face. Green, again, with outstanding protection. Gets the completion of Morton, who gave up first down yardage. Let's check in with Susie. Well, Greg Williams agrees with Joe that this game isn't over. He said, we just can't look at the scoreboard. He said, we are three or four big plays away. The Chiefs haven't necessarily surprised us. They've just executed everything perfectly. He said, what we need to do is win this half. Teams have come back from bigger deficits than this. But one of the big things is we talked about, can the Bills come back from adversity? He said, the leadership in the locker room was great. No one was hanging their heads. They want to make this a game. Well, they need to get some pressure on Trent Green, Susie, or it's not going to happen. Holmes on a screen. Got a couple of nice blocks. Makes a move on his own. Spikes rubbing down at the 48. Boy, if you don't like the design of this play, you don't like football. This was just, I mean, was absolutely perfect. This play is Priest coming out of the backfield. Watch Trent Green. That's where he's going. This is going, and, and out in front is Will Shields, the guard. Boom, there's nothing. That's, that's a play. London Fletcher, number 59, misses a tackle. Takeo Spikes finally makes a tackle, but Priest Holmes is down the field. Now, didn't Pat Williams say at the beginning, at the beginning of the week in Buffalo that Priest would not get 50 yards rushing? Yeah, yeah he did. Oh, boy. I'll take that one back. Green untouched again. Morton with a one-handed stab, couldn't bring it in. No, he has Johnny Morton wide open. I mean, Nate Clemens turns to the fans in the end zone and, and asks them to raise it up a little bit. Oh, this is one of those plays that gets away. Joe, look at this pass protection. And the thing about it is he has all day. Watch these guys funnel. Look at this. Look at Trent Green. There's really nobody even near him. He's got perfect protection. This should have been a touchdown. And you can see from that shot just how wide open Johnny Morton is. And Johnny's got some great hands, except that even he can't catch up to that one. Yeah, Nate Clements turned around and beaten by three steps. Oh, but that's what protection will do for oh. you. Corners can't cover forever. And Trent Green is going to have to use a timeout. The interesting thing about two plays ago was a screen and they didn't even get any pressure when they invited the lineman through. It's a sellout crowd of 80,000 here at Arrowhead. And they have seen the Chiefs jump all over the bill. What a great idea. Great idea. <laughs> Green with great protection again throws behind Morton. The protection that he's had has created terrific throwing lanes for Trent Green. That's what's essential to a quarterback. See, the ability to step up and see the receivers clearly. 
There you see in the middle. That one was to the left. Now this one's to Gonzalez in the middle. Again, look at the lane that he has to step up and throw the ball to Eddie Kennison. Now he comes back across the middle again to Eddie. Terrific job by the offensive line taking the interior rush of the Buffalo Bills and running them off the cup edge so that Trent can not only step up in the pocket, but see the lanes clearly. Rose and Shields, both eight-time Pro Bowlers. Another blitz. Again, they don't get there. Contact, and Kennison went down with Clements. Michael, no flag. I'll tell you what. Th this was an all-out blitz, and they didn't even get close. No. They didn't even get close to this guy. Trent Green can stand back there as long as he wants. It is crazy. Look at all of these guys. Look at the white shirts that are coming. There's seven guys coming, and they don't even get near him. And you see London Fletcher wind up tied up on Priest Holmes. And if Priest doesn't go out, it's like a block anyway, because London's not going to leave him alone. They could have picked up Brown. It was buried the last time. This time, fair catch. And he had about seven yards of room to run. Chose not to do it. Takes the fair catch after the 35-yard punt. 28-5, Kansas City. Do the Bills have anything left? your everyday adventures and the SUV that helps you conquer them. The comfortable, refined Toyota Highlander. Now with a more powerful engine and available third row seat. Somebody's gotta feel this! Somebody's gotta feel this! All the power and all the adventure. The Hulk two disc special edition. Packed with bonus material that's all the rage. Go behind the scenes for a revealing look at the amazing technology that brought the Hulk to life. Just push play and you'll be blown away. Hulk two disc special edition. Buy it on DVD and video Tuesday. Want a taste of something different in the morning? Try a little cold pizza. The new morning show, 7 a.m. on ESPN2. Sports, lifestyle, news, whatever. Cold pizza. It's a morning show with everything. Weekdays, 7 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. 9.38 to go, third quarter. Chiefs on top of the Bills, 28-5 here in Kansas City. Tough night for Drew Bledsoe. Only 98 yards through the air, two picks. Travis Henry, not much to the 16. We showed you Trent Green and the lanes that he's had the ability to throw the football through and the protection. Drew Bledsoe has not enjoyed that as much. You see his footwork rushed. This one here, he throws flat foot out of bounds. Now he's down around the goal line. Somebody's in his face one more time. Now he steps up, and the Chiefs have got double coverage on Eric Mould. Drew Bledsoe has not enjoyed the same type of comfort level in the pocket that Trent Green has had for the Chiefs. And the Bills have not enjoyed that unbelievable field position that they did in the first half either. Henry. Fighting for first down yardage. Let's go to Susie. Well, Buffalo's struggles just seem to be par for the course. They've lost six out of their last seven road games. The only win came against a struggling Jacksonville team. You can't put it all on Bledsoe, but as the quarterback, his numbers are front and center. Coming into tonight, three touchdowns, 12 interceptions, 23 sacks. They've averaged just nine points per game. They haven't scored an offensive touchdown in their last three road losses, and it just continues tonight. And they're only two for eight on third and one so far this season. Kansas City crowds the line, and Henry makes it three for nine on third and one up to the 35 yard line. I think this is a pretty good strategy right here, Paul. They've come out running on this series. Well, take a look at, I mean, this is one of the few times we've seen a hole to the right side of the offense. Take a look. 
There's the blocking. Number 79, Reuben Brown getting up in the hole. All you've got to really do with a guy like Travis Henry, because he can run so well between the tackles, just give him a crack. He's there. And that's a case of Sean Barber just feeling, filling a half a man too far over and giving him that little crease. Bloodso out in the flat to Sam Gash, and Gash is drilled by the middle linebacker Mike Maslowski, who may have gotten the worst of the collision. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Gash, I went up to him at, at training camp uh, and, and just, you know, put my arm in his arm and just, just shake hands. He almost broke my hand. And I'll tell you, he is as solid as concrete. And Maz is, Maz is a little wondering where he is right now. Well, Maz is going to the wrong bend. Bam! There is it. There is his shot. Wow. Well, Sam Gash has a reputation of blowing up linebackers. That's on blocks. He blew one up that time and he had the ball. Comedy rules on ABC Scream Tuesday. When Jim's got the same Halloween costume as Dana's date. Oh yeah, 15 yard penalty for turning me on. <laughs> Things get scary. <laughs> All new Jim, 9 8 Central. ABC Scream Tuesday. The fast C230 sport sedan with a supercharged compressor engine. To catch one, you gotta be in one. Have you ever wanted a genie? You make a wish and you get what you want. DVR. Direct TV DVR with the Devo. It's a little box. That's my genie. It's awesome. DVR is digital. Digital video recorder. There's no tapes. You just punch in, click, boom, it's recorded. Every time the show airs, and we can record them both at the same time. Same time. You can go out and have dinner. I watch what I want to watch whenever I want. It feels like I'm running my own network. Bye bye, network schedule. Bye bye. Direct TV DVR. Call 1 866 get a DVR or log on to directtv.com. Direct TV Freeview presents the amazing return to Middle Earth. We were a part of something special. This free presentation goes behind the scenes of the Lord of the Rings, the Two Towers. I started to realize the magnitude of what we were trying to accomplish and that we could accomplish it. Don't miss Return to Middle Earth, free on Channel 103 the last weekend in September and every weekend in October. Then be sure to make your Middle Earth experience complete by ordering the Two Towers, now playing on Direct TV Pay-Per-View. Talking to Mike Maslowski on the sideline, it took that wicked shot from Sam Gash. Kawika Mitchell is in as the middle linebacker for Kansas City. Draw to Henry. Travis Henry to the Kansas City 37-yard line. Greg Wesley with the tackle. Now, this, what this is going to allow Kevin Gilbride, the offensive coordinator, to do is to be able to run some play action if he wants it. You've got those linebackers back now, not necessarily respecting the run. You don't see a lot of people coming towards the line of scrimmage. And now you see Travis Henry have a chance to break it. What they're going to do is force Kansas City to come up a little bit, and that'll give Drew a chance to run some of that play-action pass. And they're doing this without their starting left tackle, Jonas Jennings, who has a hip injury. He's out. And Marcus Price, number 73, manning that left tackle spot. Henry cuts back inside, dives inside the 35. Scott Fujita with the tackle, and the report on on Mike Maslowski, mild head trauma. His report, uh, return is doubtful. Trust me, that wasn't mild. And Mike, you're talking about them coming out and running the football, but you've got six minutes to go in the third quarter. You're going to need three touchdowns at least to get back in this ball game. So now they've got to make a decision of, of putting the ball in the air. And they can't do it too late in the game when Kansas City is expects it. Let's go to throw on first down. The quick out. Complete down to the 20-yard line. Molds, who has been very quiet coming back off of that groin injury, only his fourth catch. The Bills. What a great start. 69 points the first two ball games. They have only scored 74 cents. And that includes a pretty good outfit, output last week against the Redskins. And we saw him against Miami when this whole thing started for them the other way.
draw play. Henry. Cut down that time, and it's Kalika Mitchell who came in for the injured Maslowski. And that's Greg Wesley, too, number 25, the strong safety. You look at the way these safeties fill. We talk about Lawyer Malloy, who's an all-pro safety for the Bills, but Jerome Woods and Greg Wesley, both of them are ball hawks. They both have, well, one has three interceptions, the other has two, but they can come up and hit you. Each of them at about 6'2", right around 210 pounds. And those are the guys who saved the game at the one-yard line last week against Oakland. Henry on the toss. Nice hole. Good blocking and a hard run by Henry inside the 10. He got, he, I'll tell you what, he, he got an excellent block. I'll tell you who got out front is Mike Williams, number 68, the big tackle. He got out, and Travis Henry, here comes Mike Williams on the, on the right-hand side. Look at this. They just blew everybody off the line of scrimmage, including number 50, Mitchell. You know what, Paul? It's all well and good. But the clock is in the favor of the Kansas City Chiefs. But don't you agree that the Buffalo Bills have to put a I don't care how they do it running. Or if they're running the ball well, they've got to put a touchdown on the board now. I not another field goal. I agree, but I don't think they can take three and a half minutes to do it. Henry again. Gary still stopped him momentarily in the backfield. Henry inside the five. They're going to bring it back because his knee was down. When he got hit by Stills, his knee went to the ground, and they're going to bring it back to the 10-yard line. This is good hustle by Travis Henry, but you're down. This, watch this. There's contact. You go down by contact. Boom. You're down. He's down. Now he gets back. I'll tell you, this is great hustle by Travis Henry, though. He gets back up. He takes a shot from Warfield. Good job of officiating, though. Well, you've been really nice to the officials Okay, lately. Edge Crew has done an excellent job tonight. Of course, both teams have been really good about penalties, too. Read in motion again. Blitz coming. Bledsoe unloads to Henry, and he is buried oh. in the backfield. Boy, were they all over that. Well, you know who caused this is Eric Warfield, the corner. They had a corner blitz on that play, and Bledsoe has to dump this thing in a hurry. Watch, watch on the right-hand side of the screen. You're going to see number 44 come in. He, he's the guy that hits. And that's just an outstanding play by this defense. Eric Downing, number 92. Three guys tried to come at him, and he just fought himself right up the field, right into Travis Henry's lap. And this is four down territory, I believe, for the Buffalo Bills. I think you got to look at it that way. Third and goal, and Bledsoe has to burn a timeout. Boy, that hurts. Timeout as time running down in the third quarter. It's a 28-5 game. LeBron James making his much-awaited NBA debut. And Terry Boy, you talk about pressure. Is he going to be able to handle it? Can he handle it? We just don't know. LeBron takes the ball for the first time. Guarded by Bibby. LeBron, 18 years of age. Surveying the floor. Jimmy, what is going on? I, I, I don't know. Oh, this is good. You talk about not being able to handle the pressure. I have never seen anything. road trip, hop into your Corolla and head on over to Universal. We're close. The wait is over. Will the reality live up to the hype for LeBron James? The NBA on ESPN returns with a Wednesday doubleheader. Magic Mix at 8. Cavaliers Kings at 1030. Wednesday on ESPN. Fletcher 
And Henry on the sideline as Henry has come out for Sammy Morris. Desperation time for the Bills. They have to score. Got two downs to do it in. If Drew Bledsoe can be patient. Blitz coming. They pick it up underneath to Molds. Molds to the four. Brought down by McLeon. Well, I'm going to tell you one. One thing. Old Eric Molds knows where the yard markers are. <laughs> Well, he, you know what? You know what he does? I mean, they can't get a first down, but what he does is he puts his shoulder down. Moles on the outside, number 80. Makes a throw. Now, he's not running out of bounds. That's not Eric Moles. He's trying to run to that flag and that pylon. I believe that what Drew Bledsoe has to do here is he's got to try and get his receivers to run some crossing routes and get an opportunity to get them going across the field to be able to make the play. Fourth and goal, another blitz. Bledsoe intercepted. Picked off by nose tackle Ryan Sims. I'll tell you what, they had another blitz on. The Kansas City Chiefs have not let up on Drew Bledsoe in this offense. They sent Eric Warfield again. He didn't get there. But what happened, it made Drew Bledsoe throw the ball before he wanted to throw it. You know, you can be a better defense when you add better people to it. And that's exactly what the Bills have done. Watch number 90 drop out. Just like a middle linebacker. Boy, he did a great job of looking around. He wanted to see where Coleman was. Drew Bledsoe never expected him to be there. Well, it and didn't make any difference. Because Coleman was covered anyway, Joe. Now he's in the old linebacker defensive back. If Stand. you ask any coach what is the single most important stat in a football game, 90% of them will tell you turnovers. The Bills have had four tonight and Trent Green goes right back to work to Tony Gonzalez and the other 10% Mike aren't working that's right but you know you look at this Kansas City Chiefs look at Drew Bledsoe's numbers tonight three interceptions 120 yards but what I was going to say about Trent Green is here's the Kansas City Chiefs they are up 28 to 5 and they're down in their own territory deep. The first thing they do is they come out and they throw to the tight end, Tony Gonzalez. That's their offense. But also the Buffalo Bills have been down inside the 10 twice. Yep. One was an incomplete pass, the other now an interception. Holmes. Priest Holmes, great stutter step out to the 30. And the thing about Holmes, is he just not going to turn the ball over for you? He's going to get those tough yards. And he... I'll tell you what, number 89, Jason Dunn, he's been doing this all night long. He's blocking on Eric Schobel. Look at here. Watch him stay. Watch him stay. And look at him. He puts him on the ground. That's why Priest Holmes, Priest Holmes actually set up the block. But look at this block by 89 Dunn. And the other, Boom. other thing is Dunn keeps his feet moving until he gets into position. So often, uh, guys trying to block defensive linemen stop their feet, and then they have to grab them. Green short set Holmes in the flat. Priest Holmes easily over a thousand yards and yards from scrimmage tonight leads the NFL. The Kansas City Chiefs can go on and win this football game and be 8-0 at the break. They will come back in two weeks right here to this stadium against the Cleveland Browns. I mean, you talk about a team having a break. They start the season with two home games. They get a break in the middle of the season, and now they and they'll finish at home too. And this may be their best game of the year. End of three. Monday Night Countdown, delivered by UPS, 7:30 Eastern on ESPN. As I stand alone, and right now Kansas City stands alone, the only undefeated team in the NFL well on their way to a franchise best, 8-0. Well, you know your music, huh? I got some help. <laughs> you that hard rock. Got some help. Priest Holmes. Taken out of bounds by Spikes at the 40. Flag down. And this one will come back. Dick Vermeil, we talked to him earlier in the week and asked him to put the Chiefs 7-0 start into perspective. We're not disillusioned. 
You know, we're not walking around saying we're a Super Bowl champion and all that kind of stuff. All we are right now is a contender with an opportunity to get better if we just keep doing the same things right and eliminating the, the, the things that we don't do well and become a more consistent, functional football team. Dick Vermeil is very realistic. He knows this team has warts, but week by week, the warts get smaller. Well, I, uh, and I'll tell you the other thing, too, that, you know, you, you, you don't see superstars on this football team, even though they are. Well, no, you they play like superstars. They don't act like superstars. Because, exactly. we you know, we asked Coach Vermeule about a superstar in San Francisco. Terrell Owens is going to be a free agent. said, would you want him on your football team? He says, it doesn't. he doesn't fit my profile. I wouldn't want him here. I don't need to babysit somebody. Green to Richardson in the flat. Richardson. Powerful run as he dragged Lawyer Malloy with him. And Dick also told us about the interest he takes in his players away from football. I enjoy players. If I don't enjoy them, I don't keep them. There's some guys you just don't have enough time to help. They're no bad guys, just some guys need more understanding, and sometimes you don't have enough time. <laughs> I, I think he makes a great point. He does. The, the, the key to successful football teams are character individuals because they're the ones that are going to carry you through the tough times. And the Bills have a lot of them on their side of the ball, and they got to dig down deep now and find something to get them ignited. Another blitz. Green finally pressured. Hit as he threw, and it's incomplete. Finally, Aaron Schobel got there just as Green was ready to throw. I just I just really believe that, that, that coaches in the National Football League, you know, in college you can bring these guys along, but you don't have time to babysit anybody in professional football. You're paid to do a job. You're paid to learn a system. Here is the system. I, I, you always hear these guys say, well, they're buying into my system. They should better buy in. You're already paying them. They should buy into your system. It's your system. But the thing about it is these guys in Kansas City, they, they just they understand exactly what he wants, the way he wants it, and when they talk about what do you think about him as a coach, they say he's consistent. Third and 11. Another blitz. Look at the time Green has. Now he's flushed and Posey has it. Good job by that defense. The Bills, uh, the Bills had seven possessions in the first half. They had three in the third quarter. If they're going to mount any kind of a, a run here, they're going to need to force a turnover, which won't be easy. But they're going to have to eat up some big yards on offense in these next possessions that they get. Baker will kick to Antonio Brown on fourth and ten. Brown waits at his ten. Short floater. And that touch, Woo. the gunner, Woo. and just barely recovered down at the 25-yard line after a 40-yard punt. A break for Buffalo to keep possession there. And it was Antoine Winfield who were the team, and right now it looks like Kansas City is going to stay that way. They're up 28-5 with 13-11 to go in the game. The Bills with the football needing to make something happen and in a hurry. Bledsoe underneath, and that one's complete for short yardage to Bobby Shaw. Now they've got a hustle. Buffalo going to a no-huddle offense, and Drew Bledsoe can operate this, and I actually think it's an advantage because it's tough for Kansas City to get blitzes called when they're in a no-huddle type of an offense. Draw play, Henry. And Travis Henry with a first down out to the 40. Michael, the last three teams that started 8-0, Guess what they did? Would it be a Super Bowl? Yeah, they, they won, won them. They won Super Bowls. The last three teams that started 8-0 all won Super Bowl. 19 carries, 106 yards for Travis Henry. You can't put it on him. And a strike to Campbell. He makes the catch nailed just as he got it. And the thing about this Kansas City Chief football team is they're not like the Tampa Bay Bucks dominant on defense or the Ravens were on defense or the Rams were on offense. They're really a complete football team. And we haven't seen the effect. We've seen the effects of a Dante Hall on offense tonight. We haven't seen him in the kick return game. Bledsoe with time. Molds to the 48-yard line, first down. You know, the, when, when you talk to the Kansas City Chiefs, you realize, you know, their defense isn't ranked number, you know, they're ranked way down. 
But that isn't, that's not important to them. The only thing that's important to them is giveaways and takeaways, in which they do a and great job. Points allowed. And points allowed. That's what they, and the points that they're scoring. So those three things right there just tell you why they're eight no. And Dick Vermeil says they will be better on defense in the second half of this year than they were in the first. Remember, they got four big-time free agents added to that defensive unit, plus two guys who missed almost all of last year are back. So they're still trying to get their act together. It's a kick return against Denver that wins it for them. It's a kick return against Baltimore that wins it for them. And it's their offense coming back against Green Bay with an interception return in the offense that wins it for them. So they really are a complete team. Bledsoe that time throws behind Bobby Shaw. Let's check in with Susie. Uh, it's no coincidence that the only undefeated team in the NFL also leads the NFL in takeaways. And Jerome Woods credits the front four bringing so much pressure and that attitude to meet up at the ball. But Sean Barber conveyed some surprise that he said this is the first team he's played on that they don't do any special drills in practice stripping and causing fumbles. He said he thinks the success came from momentum built in the preseason. They had so many fumbles, but no recoveries. There were high expectations built that have carried on through the regular season. And an all-out blitz this time, and Bledsoe dropped the snap from center. Boy, Ryan Sims, at number 90, who just picked off the pass on the last drive, he is clogging up the middle so well. He was their number one pick in 02. Watch Big 90. Here comes the blitz, but look at him push. Just get the big push on Trey Teague, the center. Pushes him right back into Drew's lap. And when you think about that, Drew's in the shotgun. And it's in his lap. The Bills will go for it on 4th and 11. From midfield. And 80,000 come to their feet in Kansas City. And Blitz. And Bledsoe is buried at the 39. And there's a flag down, and that's going to be holding in the offensive line. They didn't hold too many people. They, no, they, they, they should have hold, held about four or five other guys. I mean, Drew looked up and then ducked. And it, that's the smartest thing that he did. Holding offense number 73. The penalty is declined. Kansas City ball, first down. I'll tell you what, he saw them all coming. I mean, there were eight people coming. And watch him duck. Now duck. You have to. 28-5, Kansas City. Tonight, you are watching the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs, but what about the NFL's other unbeaten team? Big changes in store for next year's Yankees and Marlins, and a midseason look at the NFL's biggest surprises. He's the most innovative wrestler in the world today. Knowing no fear, knowing no limits. He is the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He's known simply as Phenomenal. AJ Styles. See NWA TNA Total Nonstop Action Wrestling today, only on pay per view. If your premium television service is just movies, you're missing out. Showtime has the biggest hit movies. And you get hot new original series. Showtime has the biggest hit movies. And you get America's number one boxing network. Showtime has the biggest hit movies. And you get explosive live events. Why limit yourself? Get Showtime. No limits. Part of Showtime Unlimited. Add it for $12 or less per month. Call 1-800-DIRECT-TV to order now. Try locks and limits. Control what your kids watch with the touch of a button. Direct TV. Happy watching. Kansas City, a place famous for barbecue. Tonight, they're roasting a buffalo. <laughs> wow. 28 to 5. Very good, Very nice. Nick. How about Buffalo's last four possessions, Michael? Interception, 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 and then they gave the ball back on down. Not going to get you back in a ball game. And Green wants to throw. Or they love to go for the throat. 
intended for Kennison incomplete. Kansas City second in the NFL in scoring. They did it tonight. Dante Hall on a big one. Then Priest Holmes untouched to the end zone. Then Holmes goes outside untouched to the end zone. And Tony Gonzalez open in the end zone. Slam dunk as well. I did to try one of those slam dunks once and I hit that pole right in the middle. And I didn't hit you. <laughs> Holmes on the toss. Winfield makes the stop. We've talked a couple of times about Kansas City being a complete team. Offense, defense, special team. Each unit has won games for them this year. Holmes and Hall have combined for 190 yards in total offense, three touchdowns, four takeaways by the defense. They lead the league in that department. And Dante Hall, two kick returns, 19-yard average, that's way below his standard, but you know what? They haven't needed it tonight. And no punt return. That's right. So his average stays at 21. Yeah, 21. And he does do one thing, a lot of things. He creates field position for his football team. Green, look at that protection. Throws incomplete off the fingertips of Morton. I'll tell you what, this, this is frightening. We've been watching this thing for the last three and a half quarters of Trent Green standing in that pocket, being able to throw the ball wherever he wants to throw it. I mean, he's barely got dirt on his uniform. The reason why, they blocked eight that time and ran a two-man route. Now, you're not going to get to a quarterback when there's eight guys up front protecting because you can't bring enough to get near him. Baker to punt, movement up front. Kansas City this half. I gave you Buffalo. It's Kansas City's. They've had the ball four times this half, and they punted four times. Conservative. They haven't needed anything more than that, have they? No, they haven't. But the only the other problem is, though, that they haven't run much off the clock either. That's but I like what they're doing. Just keep doing your offense. Well, Whatever your offense is, run it. And you, you bring up a great point there, Paulie, because unabated by the defense, five-yard penalty, it's still fourth down. We look at teams that have identities, and you say to yourself, what's the identity of the Kansas City Chiefs? And I talked to Al Saunders, their offensive coordinator, and he basically said, he said, we're unpredictable and we're diversified. And we've seen it tonight. We've seen runs, we've seen deep passes, we've seen crossing routes, we've seen short passes, we've seen reverses. They have everything that they're willing to run. They don't really have it, they're willing to run it. Buffalo crowding the line. They want to come after Baker. They don't get there. And Kansas City will down it inside the five. 29-yard kick, but perfectly placed. Julian Battle stopped the ball on special teams. Half the carbs of Bud Light. And on the other, the gold medal winner of the World Beer Cup. Then you have a Miller Light in each hand. Lucky you. Miller Light. Great taste. Less villain. What do we mean when we say our new fire-grilled chicken baguettes are made to order? We mean that yours isn't made until you order it. Imagine that. The new fire-grilled chicken baguettes at Burger King. Come on over. The fire's ready. Well, son, you're a man now off to college. Don't forget uh, protection. You know, heartburn, indigestion. You'll want Pepto. You might meet a nice girl. She might cook you dinner. She'll give you diarrhea. You'll need Pepto. Dude, college parties? Pink stuff. Only one leading brand can be used for five different stomach problems. Dorm food. Got any Pepto? Pepto-Bismol. Pink does more than you think. Introducing the all-new rotary-powered Mazda RX-8. Jack? The way you feel about sports cars will never be the same. So, so. The wait is over. Will the reality live up to the hype for LeBron James? The NBA on ESPN returns with a Wednesday doubleheader. Magic Mix at 8. Cavaliers Kings at 1030. Wednesday on ESPN.
Halloween coming up next week and the Chiefs have played trick or treat with the Bills tonight. No candy for Buffalo. There's somebody's next door neighbor. <laughs> Henry on the draw breaking tackles running hard. Travis Henry out to the 13. I like what Kansas City has done through this entire game. They've had the lead. They've got a nice 23 point lead. But Greg Williams on the defensive side in the last possession came with two full blitzes. Everybody says, oh, they've gotten a little more conservative. They play a little more zone. Greg Robinson is doing what he does. That's bringing pressure. On the other side of it, Al Saunders is throwing the ball down the field. Second and two, Henry. Drives his way out to the 21. That will be a first down. I, I took a look at some teams. This, these are what I call vertical teams. Teams that throw the ball down the field. And the other teams are the West Coast teams. You look at the records. I believe that the rules today allow you to throw the ball down the field more. And you need to take advantage of it. The West Coast teams are based off of run after catch with short passes. And, and I think that the game is evolving a little bit more to being able to stretch the ball down the field, to come up with the big plays in the passing game. And certainly, Trent Green and the Chiefs have done it tonight. Dante Hall's first touchdown. Well, yeah, but you look at those teams that you had up there on the vertical side, they all have receivers that can get downfield. And that's something Buffalo is lacking because of a, they don't have the speed. A peerless price, I think they miss him a lot because nobody can go down the field and make plays. Bledsoe dumps it off to his tight end, Mark Campbell. It's interesting that you bring that up because Buffalo in the offseason made a commitment to the run. They got rid of three of Drew Bledsoe's best weapons, Peerless Price, Larry Centers, and Jay Reimersman. Now when you can't run the ball and you've given up a lot of the guys who can catch, you've got a problem. I don't think they could have afforded Peerless Price, though. I don't think it was a No, I agree. I think Peerless made the decision to leave. Oh, and oh. Bledsoe is just ripped. Loose ball, Kansas City has it. John Browning recovered after Warfield knocked it loose. They're going to get him killed. You know oh, what? Oh, they are. But no, I'll you know what? what? He's going to get himself killed on this one. Now this, this, I mean, he should have gotten rid of this ball a long time ago. But Warfield, not only does Warfield hit him, but Warfield doesn't know that the ball comes out. Look where he came from. Out on the corner, he hit left. So look at Warfield. He's, he's dancing, and he just... I mean, oh. that's bang. I mean, I, Warfield actually let up on him. Do you I know gotta, that? I got to tell you something. I don't know what Drew Bledsoe's thinking. I mean, he makes the one throw that's intercepted, and he's standing there, and look at that offensive line. It's like, okay, it's a Sunday afternoon, and it's a Saturday night, and it's a nice night, and I can relax. He's going to get himself killed. Another turnover. Five for that Kansas City defense. So opportunistic. Holmes reverses his field. That's Trent that. Green to a great block. Touched it. What a block by Trent Green. Are you kidding? On London Fletcher. On London Fletcher. Trent Green comes back. Quarterbacks are so tough. Oh, shit. Uh, Boy, this one was. Well, Drew Bledsoe's still standing after his hit. He proved how tough he was. And then Trent Green keeping his head on a swivel. Joe, with all due respect, this was not a quarterback's block. This was a block block. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You think Priest Holmes, watch this. You oh. talk about his moving his feet back. Here comes, bang! Actually, it wasn't on London Fletcher. No, Not he had Nate Clements. Clements. Well, uh, that's still, still impressive. Oh, Horton yeah. Anderson converts. 35 to 5. Kansas City will go 8 and 0 oh for the first time in its history. Sports Center tonight. Wait till you hear what Warren Sapp has to say about the state of the NFL. Sapp's Bucks show Parcells Cowboys why Tampa Bay is the defending champs. And is this the end of the Yankees? Some opportunities are too good to pass up. The Nissan Central. Hey, sports fans, can't get enough Major League Soccer action? 
Want to catch more spectacular goals by Kobe Jones, Brian McBride, and Clint Mathis? Fantastic saves by Tony Miola and Tim Howard? And incredible tackles by Jeff Akers and Chris Armas? Then sign up today for the MLS Shootout Package. If you love soccer, you'll love every minute of this season's non-stop excitement. To order the season's MLS Shootout Package for only $49, call 1-800-GET-SPORTS or log on to directtv.com now. Okay, thank you. Found the perfect house? I think so. Where are you getting your loan? Uh, our friend knows this mortgage broker. How do you know it's the best loan for you and not the mortgage broker? Of... Uh, we don't. Well, at eLoan, you get a personal loan consultant who's not driven by commissions on the type of loan you choose. So you get the right loan at a great rate. That is a great rate. Nothing should come between you and the right loan. That's why there's eLoan. Apply now at eLoan.com or call 1-800-ELOAN-22. Priest Holmes has just moved past Christian Okoye behind only Marcus Allen with 41 career rushing touchdowns with the Kansas City Chiefs. What a great but brief career he has had in Kansas City. 12 and 8 games. Wow. Brown inside the five. You know, even in a blowout win like this, coaches like to have things that they can work on next week. We didn't do this very well. We didn't do that very well. They're going to have to be real picky this week. It's a good thing the Chiefs have a week off because it's going to be very difficult, like you say, Mike, for Dick Vermeil to sit down with his ball club and say, this is what we need to do. And you're absolutely right. And that's a smart move, I think, putting Drew Bledsoe on the bench at this point and not getting him killed like he did on that last play. Alex Van Pelt, the eight-year veteran out of Pitt, will check in. This is a Bills team that thought they got it back on track against the Redskins a week ago, and now they're getting their lunch handed to them on the road in probably the toughest venue to play in the National Football League. Van Pelt throws short. Will pick up about five yards on that toss. Mr. Hunt's got to be very happy what he sees out of his football team, and I know it just breaks his heart that he's not here in the stadium to have an opportunity to watch it. I'll tell you, you, you look at this guy here, you watch what he's done. He's got three touchdowns tonight, 83 yards. There's nothing showboating about him. No. He just does his job because he is truly focused. There's a flag on the play. That was Sammy Morris with the carry. The marker down back at the 36. And this run will come back. I'll tell you what happens in, in, in you look at the situation now. This is uh, in the last two series we've had a holding penalty on the Buffalo Bills. This is now you holding get... offense number 61 10 yard penalty repeat second down. It's the right guard Mike Pusillo. But what, what happens Michael you get you get lazy you get you, you don't pay attention to what you're doing and, and all night long they've been getting beat. And now instead of doing their job and still staying in there and, and try to help this football team, they're holding. Hey, the Buffalo Bills are playing in the division where New England looks like it's got it together. Miami, you know, you yep. want to see what happens tomorrow night. Um, the Jets, you know, struggling a little bit. We'll see what happens with Chad Pennington back. But they still have a shot at winning the division. It's going to be interesting to see how they react after this ball game. Screen to Morris. Chased down from behind by Eric Hicks. These are all these are are running the clock out plays. Yeah, I mean because Kansas City's going to give you anything up to five yards. They'll let you have that. Well, you can't really can't do anything else this right. point, and can yeah, you? Here's the Buffalo Bills on the road. They lose to Miami seven to seventeen. They lose to the Jets thirty to three. Now it looks like they may lose to the Chiefs thirty five right. to five. All of them on the road. This is a very veteran football team that doesn't do a very good job when it gets away from. Orchard Park. Van Pelt being chased. It's intercepted by Warfield. Well, if they didn't take six turnovers, Paul. Six. <laughs> I said if they didn't have the, the takeaway lead, they got it now. Oh, they got it I'm now. I'm telling you. That, you know, here's another ball that should not have been thrown. If you're going to throw it, throw it out of bounds. There was just nothing. Look downfield. Look at Warfield. All right, he's got, he's got, he knows he's got help, but he's just playing. Alex Van Pelt runs, runs out to the side and he can't see red shirts. You've got to be able to see these red guys. He just about kills Drew Bledsoe on a blitz, forces the fumble, and he turns around and gets his hands on another interception. And now Todd Collins will come in. Carl Peterson. The quarterback for Trent Green, and there's the general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, Carl Peterson. 
who along with Lynn Stiles, the personnel man, and Dick Vermeil, have put together quite a football team here in Kansas City. Richardson and big Pat Williams won't let him go. 17 interceptions, nine fumbles, 26 turnovers. Joe, they are rivaling what the record-holding Washington Redskins did. Well, we were through half a year. We were plus 43. Now, they've got 26 turnovers. I mean, we were plus 43. That counts the ones on offense you give away and the ones you take away. But you're right, Mike. They really are. I mean, they're, they're going to have to average some more points on defense yep. scoring, but uh, they're averaging over 30 points a game right now on offense. A year ago, they did the same thing, but they didn't have the complement of a defense. No, they had to get... 35 Late points game. a game last Offense. year. Five yard penalty. And then Still hope it down. was enough. And sometimes it wasn't. Maybe winning overtime. They put up some big numbers last year and still lost, but the defense is better. You considerably know. better. And the offense, which has struggled a little bit at times this year, they have scored the points, but they haven't racked up the yards. Tonight they have done both. We asked, I asked a lot of the guys when we sat down and talked to them on Friday, what would eight and O mean? And I found Jerome Woods, I thought his interesting answer was the most interesting. He said, we're not 7-0 going into this game. We're 1-0. We're taking each game one at a time. And I think that's the only way this team can approach it. Collins, the former Bill. And that one is intercepted by Kevin Thomas. Did he stay in bounds? I'm not sure he was in bounds. I don't know whether he got that other foot down. Now, they called it a touchback. But this could be one that Coach Vermeil might want to take, might want to take another look at. Well, he certainly gets, caught the ball. Well, Thomas is running off like he, like they, they said it's okay. Here's the catch, right foot down. No right foot oh, out. That's, this is not an no, interception. That's not an interception. If Dick wants to, just throw the hanky out and watch this. Left foot hits the ground, a right foot hits the ground. Left foot comes down out of bounds with the ball. No. No. Watch his foot when he catches the ball. That left foot never touches the ground until it winds up out of bounds. And Ed Hockley and his crew have talked it over, and the verdict is? The second foot came down out of bounds, therefore the pass was incomplete. It's a nice job there. They got together, made the call, got it right. Well, I, I think they kind of peeked back at this, the big screen up on the scoreboard. They didn't have to go undercover. They're not well, they, allowed to do they that. They can't do that. Well, they maybe they can't, but I think they might have. Paul, what? Don't be accusing them of doing things like that. Pat Sam Williams. Adams, Pat Williams, they are dead. Well, that was part of the game plan for the Chiefs. Make the big guys inside run, sideline to sideline. They spend too much time on the field. Collins gets a reprieve after the poor pass almost resulted in interception. Draw to Richardson. Posey is right there in the backfield to get him. The three stars tonight all performed well. Trent Green, 273 yards, two scores, no picks. Priest Holmes, 83 yards. Dante Hall didn't do it on kick returns, but got 107 yards as a pass receiver and got his first touchdown reception of the season. And I thought this was the best game that Trent Green played. I know he brought him back against Green Bay, but from start to finish, this was the most complete game I've seen him play. And now Morton Anderson in his 22nd year will try from 49 yards. Hit the crossbar, one over. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Morton. <laughs> the wine connoisseur squeaked out one. Look at this. Oh, skids right over the middle bar. Paul and I were watching him in warm-ups, and we said 49 yards is the absolute limit to his range. He kicked that one 49 yards on the dot. And here's a guy who had surgery in December last year on his knee because he had some loose things in it and it was his plant foot and now it just allows him to feel so much better and be able to, to kick 49 yard field goals at the age of 57 or however old he is 43 years old <laughs> I wonder if you were going to catch that wake up Paul wake up Morton Anderson second to Gary Anderson in a couple of categories points 
age. Tied, yeah, tied uh, with Gary Anderson behind only George Blanda for the number of games played in the NFL. Got a chance to break all those records. How about this? You got a 41-year-old kicker in Gary Anderson in Tennessee. Got a 43-year-old place kicker in Kansas City. And wouldn't Jim Fossil kill to have either oh. one of them in New York? They didn't need one today. Now 38 to 5. Antonio Brown from the eight. It's a guy with blinding speed takes it up to the 34. Earlier, Susie caught up with a very special woman in Dick Vermeil's life, his wife, Carol. Carol, Dick's work ethic is well documented. These days, he tells us he works from 7 a.m. to 1 a.m. How do you keep your sanity? Well, um, I, w I do some volunteer work. We have a great uh, group of wives here. We get together often. We call it Chicks Night Out, and we have a great time. And um, so, you know, you just, if you're in the NFL and you're the wife, you better accept this kind of lifestyle or you're, you're not going to be a happy person. They just do what they have to do. What would you like to see him do after this year? Whatever he wants because uh, this is what, you know, makes him tick. He loves his players, he loves the guys, and he's a great teacher, and apparently, you know, his style works. So whatever he wants to do is fine with me, it really is. We've made one mistake already. I'm, we're not gonna do that again. Yeah, that's really nice of her to say that because he admitted that he made an emotional decision as we've got another turnover, Jerome Woods this time, that's seven. He made an emotional decision after he won the Super Bowl in St. Louis. Thought that was the ultimate, so I'm going to quit. He acknowledges now that that was a mistake because he truly loves this so much. And the perfect opportunity presented itself when Carl Peterson and Lynn Stiles, two people he has been with throughout his coaching career, going all the way back to college, came calling and said we've got a perfect situation for you we want you to come to Kansas City and you get the feeling talking to him he is leaning toward staying here just as long as he wants the, the spotting boards that I use for every game Dick Vermeil designed and he, he gave them to me when he left broadcasting to go back to coaching he said these might be able to help you a little bit give you a little bit of a good layout for games if you want to work off them I've never done anything but use them uh, the man is so thorough in everything he does. And I think it was interesting to hear Carol say, I think he's doing a pretty good job. I, I tend to agree with her. I think he's doing a pretty good job. Well, my wife said I can do anything I want to do as long as I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Susie. Well, and what a credit to Dick Vermeule's career to hear what the players have to say about him, past and present. London Fletcher, who he coached in St. Louis, talks about how genuine and honest he is, his passion for the players, the impact he has on your life, and how he makes you truly believe. And he said the Rams lost a lot when Dick Vermeil left St. Louis, and as London has moved throughout the NFL, he's realized just how rare Vermeil is. And then Trent Green says, because he is so rare, sometimes the players have a hard time believing it. When your head coach cries a couple of times a week, you're not really sure if he's genuine and honest, but it doesn't take long for the players to find out that he is the real deal. Susie, you're absolutely right. He gets a lot of grief for as emotional as he is, but uh, I find it very endearing. I, I think it's it's a tremendous quality for him, and he doesn't, he doesn't try to hide it either. Tell you about the kind of man he is. When London Fletcher signed in Buffalo because he, he played for Dick in St. Louis, he called London Fletcher. Dick Vermeil called him to congratulate him and tell him how happy he was for him. The Kansas City Chiefs had a losing record last year. They'll be the first team since 1973 Vikings to start a season 8-0 after a losing record. The praise that Mazda 6 has received for applying sports car engineering to a sedan will appeal to all sorts of people. For the safety conscious, the highest government safety rating. For the consumer minded, the highest rated midsize sedan among owners. And 50 international awards for the speed readers. The Mazda 6. Now get 0.0% APR financing for five years or 2,000 cash back on selected 2003 Mazda 6 models. Okay, so we've picked out the TV, the surround sound, and you already have the DVD player. Right. Okay, so my home theater question to you is this. Do you have a movie where stuff blows up? 
<laughs> it's all here. Circuit City has all your favorite DVDs, all at great low prices. And we're the first place to go for new releases every Tuesday. Like Hulk Special Edition, a two-disc DVD set for just $15.99. Circuit City, we're with you. What stands the test of time? Our strongest bonds, our fundamental values. At New York Life, our humanity, integrity, and financial strength provide protection and security for millions of families through changing times. Values that make New York Life the company you keep. Access NFL.com to vote for your favorite NFL All-Stars. The Pro Bowl ballot is online exclusively at NFL.com. We invite you to stay tuned for Sports Center. Scott Van Pelt and Stuart Scott standing by. Whoa, look at this. Good stuff. They'll have why Warren Sapp refuses to apologize for his recent indiscretions. The Yankee dynasty over? It certainly is for this year. And are the Chiefs the NFL's biggest surprise? You know what? Warren's getting to be a little bit of a pain in the butt with stuff like that. I mean, I'm over it, Warren. Just move on and play football. You're too great a football player to get wrapped up in this junk. Good advice. Oh. Collins to Richardson. Really exposed, and Winfield drilled him. Now, how do you recover from this if, if you're the Bills? Because you yeah. talked about Paul last week. They thought they had turned things around. They played so well against Washington, and they come out here and lay an egg in Kansas City. Well, Greg Williams said, you know, we had a great practice this week. We should do very well tonight. Well, they're not. You've got to go back to your leaders and have your leaders pick this football team up. And, and until they do, and they play better, you're going to be in trouble. Brown, fair catch. We asked you earlier who's been the NFL MVP so far this season, and by a wide margin, you have voted Steve McNair of Tennessee, who is having just a brilliant year. Isn't he something? I'm telling you, I this guy here, I, you know, I just really enjoy sitting and talking to Steve McNair because he is the one guy that, that, you know, they were patient with him when he came in the league, and he was he's very glad that they did it that way. He's really grown into it. And oh, yeah. He dislocated the ring finger on his throwing hand and still are, are, is posting numbers. And he's got four other ones. I know, but they're hard to hold it with just four. Believe me, the football is hard to hold with four. Sammy Morris, the running back behind Van Pelt, and he'll get the draw. When the Chiefs still playing hard on defense, can the Chiefs go undefeated? Tough question. I mean, I, I mean, only can, one team ever did it. I know, the, I know, the 72 Dolphins are sitting out there going, eh, I don't know. But I'll tell you, I've looked at their next eight games. Coming up after the bye, they get Cleveland at home, and then they get, I think, probably one of the teams that's playing best. You talk about Coach of the Year, Marvin Lewis. They get the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they go Cleveland, then Cincinnati, and then they get teams like Detroit, Chicago. And teams that, you know, right now they are better than. And uh, well, that's four. Who are the other four? Now they got Minnesota. Uh -huh. and, and if I could look at the schedule, I'd tell you. <laughs> well, they have a legitimate chance after winning this game to go to 12 and 0. And that's going to start scaring some people, well, the historians. I think I think they're a good, solid foot. Now I think they're starting to play as a good, solid football team. And with the bye in the middle of the season, they're going to be in a very healthy state physically as they come back to play the second half. Dick Vermeil, an early birthday present. He'll be 67 next week. Maybe the more important number, he's 8-0 right now. The final score, 38-5 Chiefs for Joe Theismann, Paul McGuire, Susie Culbert, and our entire ESPN crew. This is Mike Patrick. Good night from Arrowhead in Kansas City. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.
Donovan McNabb and his mom are coming to your home. Hey, what's going on? Come on in. Where's the kitchen? Back here. And they're bringing dinner. Campbell's Chunky Chicken Corn Chowder. Now heartier with even more chicken. Sure beats another frozen dinner. One game before you go. I'm McNabb. No, I'm McNabb. Come on, Donovan. I'm always McNabb. I am McNabb. Boys. Play nice. I'm McNabb. It's my house. I'm McNabb. I'm McNabb. I'm McNabb. Have chunky soup for dinner. Make it Campbell's instead. ESPN thanks you for watching this presentation of the National Football League. This is Sports Center. Week eight in the NFL. It's all business. A giant comeback in Viking country. The Panthers go off into overtime. Again, the Bucks trying to right their ship against the boys. And Coach Billick reverses his previous call. Dump the whole thing. How the World Series champs act at their age. And why the hurt in New York has only just begun. Tiger and BJ vie for final round fame and fortune and are the days numbered for the nation's top team. Plus, Warren Sapp blows his whistle on the NFL. If you ain't promoting that shield, the NFL shield. You are wrong. You are dead wrong. Hold on to your hat, Sports Center now. Respect Sports Center all up in your ear hole. Stuart Scott Van Pelt. Seven years after his social security was supposed to kick in, a 72 year old man does something no one his age has ever done. But we begin football style. Yes, we do. A day after Jack McKeon's Marlins ended New York's baseball season, the G Men trying to revive their football season as they took on unbeaten Minnesota. Up underneath the dome, and Randy Moss getting ready to do work, trying to make his 34th 100-yard receiving game of reality, and he got right to it. Down 10-3. Dante, where you at? 84. And if you don't know, now you know. Poor Will Allen got torched. We're tied at 10s. One personal, just business, and it kept on coming. Third quarter, 16-10 Giants. Will Allen getting an earful, and now he's getting an eyeful. Dante rolling, looking for Randy again. Seven catches, a buck and a quarter through the air. Two touchdowns. Oh, Will Allen getting picked on, getting worked over. What am, exactly, what are you supposed to do? Nothing. Fourth quarter, here come the G-Men. Kerry Collins, Jeremy Shockey, where you at, big fella? Three catches, 81 yards, and Jeremy rumbling up the field. New York had 450 yards worth of offense. Little sketchy early on, though, when they were inside the five-yard line in the first quarter. They settled for some field goals when they threw it down here, so they give it to Tiki, who had 122 total yards of offense. G-Men now up 22-17. They miss a two-point conversion. Vikings now trying to stay undefeated. Dante, for the first time all year, picked off by Frank Walker. Giants trying to put this one away late in the fourth quarter on the ensuing possession. Kerry Collins, who had a big day through the air, looking for Ike Hilliard. Speaking of big days, nine grabs, 100 yards, two touchdowns. He snuck inside, got the grab, and the Giants pull off the big upset. The Vikings have finally lost. In their previous three games, Giants atrocious once they got inside their opponents. 28 possessions, just two touchdowns. Sunday, they were inside there six times. They scored five times, including three touchdowns. But while the Giants' offense was rolling, Sean Salisbury is here to break down their defense that also did some work. All right, Scott. You know, in this Giants-Vikings game today, the Giants need to explode on offense, and they did. But it was one play on defense that epitomized what the Giants did today to the Vikings. And it was a rookie who did it. This is Dante Culpepper and the Vikings. They've been explosive all year, and he hadn't thrown an interception coming into this game. That's Frank Walker on the pick. When you see the way he played this on Keenan Howry, you'll say this is the way you're supposed to play. But you see Howry lined up. Walker eyeballs the quarterback, then looks in. This is man coverage all the way. Head up right now. Walker has no idea where Howry's going with this route. So he still backpedals, backpedals, feeling it. Bam. Now look at the, sh the, the arms and the hands go down. That's a dead giveaway that you're going to run the out cut or that you're stopping your route. His rear end also sinks. There you see the right foot. Walker's going to drive on the ball, and he's going to drive right through Howry, and he's going to become the receiver, drives, run the route for him, gets the interception. Stu Scott, that's the way you play defense. 
Sean thinks Panthers sing so good they needed extra time. Jake DeLone back at the crib, hometown, Nolens. First quarter, Stephen Davis breaking off 